Another Slay the Spire stream. I'm your host, Visual Bread. And today we're going to be getting started with a watcher run. Darn. Well, I'm in the unfortunate position of having to interpret people's random numbers. Seems like there's a pretty clear date interpretation of your number, but uh, 55 in 9 also just sounds like Boom Upper, so kudos on choosing Boom Upper. Um, there's a three elite path that involves a mega elite here. Um, I like this starting path. It's three fights, shop, question mark. Shop is a little bit early. I prefer question mark shop because then we can take the serpent event and get rid of the curse. Uh, in the absence of that, we'll probably do this other three fight path that also features three elites and does not feature a mega elite, which is better than having a mega elite. In fact, this path is pretty much exactly what you want. You're forced into a fight on floor one. Next thing you want is question marks, because then you can get golden idol, and then, uh, or potentially like power up a little bit. And then three fights before the first elite is what you want, and then fire elite, fire is great. And then three elites in the act is ideal. I guess the ideal path, there'd be another fire here, and then like a question mark here. But that's like literally best case scenario. Transformer card's terrible, max HP is probably not good enough to displace the presumptive choice of swapping out for a boss relic and transforming two cards is just as bad as transforming one card except this one also gives you a curse which is unacceptable um, so i think it's going to be a boss relic swap here boss relic swaps are really good on watcher the uh, original relic of pure water is not good and boss relics are amazing um, certainly the difference between pure water and a random boss relic is greater than 6 max HP. 6 max, max HP is like a fairly low value common relic, it's a strawberry basically. And uh, boss relics are way better than common relics, so let's get one. <laughs> Empty cage is one of the worst options, so perhaps in this uh, particular situation uh, we might have been better off uh, not doing a boss relic swap. However, Empty Gage is fine. Um, it increases the density of good cards in the deck pretty significantly, um, presuming that we can survive. Um, the most conservative choice here is Strike Defend. Um, that sort of like leaves everything in the same ratio as it was before while slightly increasing the density of Vigilance and Eruption in the deck. Um, the other choices we could do are two defends or two strikes. Um, two defends is sort of optimizing for elites. Um, strikes are way better than defends against elites, particularly uh, Gremlin Knob and um, and Wagabulman. Although defends are probably better than strikes in the Sentry fight. Um, uh, two strikes is extremely aggressive. Two strikes uh, is very hard to get away with. Uh, if we're doing a three elite path, uh, because you really need the strikes to fight Gremlin Nub. Um, so since we're on a three three fight path, I think we're going to do uh, strike defend um, or double defend uh, for the card removes. I could see double defend. Certainly, do we're doing at least one defend. So we'll just click that button. Um, Let's see. If we do double defend, we have two defends left. Defend, defend, vigilance. Uh, we're going to have a nine card deck either way. So we'd have three defensive cards in nine cards. So we'd draw on average like slightly more than one per hand, which means we might only be able to block for one, which is pretty inconvenient because the jawworm attacks for 12. Okay. Fully defend strike. No jawworm. Uh, we're guaranteed to get Calm next turn, and we're going to want to play it. Uh, probably want to play Vigilant Strike, so we'll just do Corruption Strike now. We can actually get Lethal. Oh no, we can't. We, can, we, don't, we don't have cards to get Lethal, but if we'd drawn one more card and it had been a strike, we would have gotten uh, We'll take the no damage route here, and get Lethal this turn. Okay. Perfect Cultist fight. Um, Prostrate's probably the wrong pick for Floor 1, don't really need that. Simmering Fury's kind of fun, uh, but I think Flying Sleeves has got a big advantage here. The advantage being uh, that we need to fight Elites, and Flying Sleeves is an attack. Uh, flying Sleeves is notably terrible against Bogavulin. 
um, because it scales down even faster than a strike. Um, but it's very good against Gremlin Knob because sometimes against Gremlin Knob you have more strikes than you can play on one turn. And if that's the case, then you're probably going to have more defense than you can play on the next turn. Or more, you're probably not going to have a, a full turn worth of strikes on the next turn. So Flying Sleeves helps even that out. Flying Sleeves is not a particularly impressive card on the whole, though. I'd say Flying Sleeves is among the worst um, Watcher Damage Commons. Um, it's good if you get Establishment. It's good if you get Fasting. Um, these are pretty much the, the two situations it's good in. Um, if you're trying to do Divinity, there's better Retain cards. Um, if you get Sneko Eye, Flying Sleeves is a huge liability because the cost gets randomized and then you get stuck with the three mana Flying Sleeves in hand. We could pick Simmering Fury. Um, Simmering Fury does a heck of a lot of work. Um, I really like the card. Uh, but it isn't an attack. Uh, that's true. Yeah, you do you do have some some uh, turn optimization uh, against Laga as well as well as against. Um, I mean, retain helps in every boss fight right? or in every elite fight because in Gremlin Knob it helps make sure you can attack every turn. In Laga Villain it helps you defend on the turns he's attacking and attack on the turns he's buffing or debuffing. And uh, in Sentries it helps you do stuff on every turn <laughs> um, instead of getting getting dazed to oblivion. Um, but I would say Flying Sleeves is significantly worse than a strike in in uh, Logaboo, and I would definitely like if somehow I could replace a Flying Sleeves with a strike before that fight, and then get the Flying Sleeves back after I would do it. Um, I really like Simmering Fury. Um... I just don't think I can justify picking Simmering Fury. We do have a couple more fights to pick up offensive cards. If we get Simmering Fury and then we get like a Wallop or something, we're really happy. Um, Simmering Fury helps us pick uh, Flurry of Blows um, and like Mental Fortress. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to pick Simmering Fury. I don't like Flying Slaves in the deck. Oh, surprise shop. Okay. Well, this is bad. Um, empty fist is good. We can do empty fist potion. We can do rush down to go with the uh, simmering fury. Um, it seems like a lot of stains change combo stuff for floor two. Uh, protect is here. Protect is great. We can do rush down protect. We do have a small deck, so we could try to do infinite stuff. Um, I don't. There's there's no obvious way way to do infinite um, with this deck. Uh, Simmering Fury doesn't really help because um, it only puts you into wrath next turn. Um, but rushdown definitely helps. If we could afford, like, Rushdown card remove, we'd be pretty close to infinite. Honestly, I think it's just Empty Fist Protect here. Empty Fist is such a such a strong attack. And we've got two Wrath Enters, so it seems pretty appropriate to take an exit. We also might get to upgrade it before the Elite Fight. Empty Fist has got a massive upgrade. It doesn't like, make any sense. It's like, do 28 damage if you're in Wrath. Jeez. Protect helps to replace the defend we removed. Alright. Um, Golden Idol? No. Uh, I think I would much rather scrap ooze and get a relic than upgrade. Um, usually, in this sort of situation, it's correct to, to reach into the scrap ooze like three to four times. Um, so we'll definitely do two. Um, do we go to 
43. 43 seems fine. We can heal before and after the elite, so not too worried. Okay, how about 35? Uh, 35 is pretty low, but we get a relic 55% of the time. I think maybe we're out. Because, like, I'd go to 35, but I don't know if I'd go to... Um, what would the next one be? Uh, 26. Um, 26 is really low. And we still do want to fight three elites. And it's only a 55% chance. This is where Scrappy starts getting gross. Does Burn just click until death? <laughs> just, just no matter what. Yeah, I do like to think about it. Um, it really, really hurts to click this button four times and not get a relic. Um, I think I will click it one more time. Oh, thank god. Okay. Stupid strawberry. <laughs> At least it means I can stop clicking the button. Um, is Eruption Empty Fist lethal? No, it's 27. Um, I think we're on team Protect the Empty Fist, unfortunately. A very fun team. Oh. Uh, well, that's weird. I guess Vigilant Simmering Fury is fun. that energy next turn. And wow. Not find lethal? That's a tremendously improbable. Uh, I guess Vigilance defend blocks for 9. He's hitting for 10. Seems okay. I'm unwilling to waste 11 damage. So I'm just going to pretend that we can kill both next turn. I guess it's exactly these cards, so I could have known what I was getting, but... Alright, we only took, what, one in that fight? Not too bad. Empty Mind, seems like we're doing a lot of stance changing. Um, Empty Mind helps get that infinite that uh, Finster wanted. I know I'll definitely get you there. Um... Yeah, what is it? Like, Empty Mind Inner Peace? I guess you want, like, Empty Mind um, and then the the Calm one. The, like, the strike that enters Calm. That's, like, the best situation. Oh, wait. Empty Mind can't draw itself, can it? So you'd need something a little bit extra to get that to work. I think Empty Mind's okay. What do I think about Empty Mind? We already got one exit. I don't know, maybe we don't need that much. Drawing a bunch of cards is kind of sketchy. Well, I got the one attack. Uh, there is a Consecrate being offered here. I think maybe we just take the Consecrate. Consecrate is pretty decent. If we had a Consecrate, I'd be pretty enthusiastic about Empty Mind, since we'd be able to draw the zero-cost card and play it. That's not really the situation, so I'll take the Consecrate. Uh, Alright, go ahead and block out, do some damage. Uh, we do not get lethal, so I think we'll try and set it up for next turn. That's always happening. Okay. There's an establishment, we have a protect in the deck. Man, I wish I could take all these cards. <laughs> I, I want a button, I want a mod that's like, just once a run, you get like a little token. Once a run, there's an extra button over here that's just like, all of them. Because these cards are so good together. Uh, and you can't use the all of them on the, the boss reward. Uh, it has to be either a regular, elite, regular enemy or an elite. Um, so establishment is really good with protect. It's pretty good with that... Um, all for a curse. I don't know if I'd take all these for a curse. I think I probably would. Meditate's really good. Um, I 
yeah, I, I really, really like establishment. Establishment is, is good like, a lot of the time. Uh, second protect, I think, is a no. Uh, meditate is great. Um, but I think establishment's probably the pick. So let's pick establishment. Great. That's exciting. We're 41. I think we can probably afford to upgrade. Especially if that upgrade is getting me something that helps me save some health in the fight. Um, empty Fist is a great upgrade. Uh, establishment makes the Protect Decosting more reliable. Is Protect Decosting valuable in any of the elite fights? I guess it's best in sentries for if they're uh, double attacking. Actually, Consecrate upgrade is pretty good for sentries too. But I think Empty Fist is probably the pick. Just a ton of damage. Getting fights over with since 2019. All right, well, here it is. Doing 28 damage on turn one. Hard not to like that. Um, if we have as good a turn next turn as we had this turn, we could Simmering Fury now and get lethal. However, four of the cards would be used. We're drawing seven, so we could draw, we draw three more cards. Let's see, so if we do, if we do Vigilance Simmering Fury now, uh, we play one strike, and then if the drawn cards are Empty Fist, Eruption, Consecrate, um, or, like, Empty Fist, Consecrate, Strike, or something, um, then we do 12, so he's at 30, and then we have to find 30 damage in two cards. Empty Fist Consecrate does that. So basically, we, if we draw Simmering Fury, we, we really want to draw Empty Fist. Um, we'd be drawing three cards out of six in hand plus four, so three out of ten. So there's like 30% chance of drawing Empty Fist. Um, triple Strike is not enough. It's 36, and he's at 42. Triple Strike Consecrate is enough. Um, double Strike Eruption is also enough, I think. This does 18, 18 plus 24. Uh, yeah, it's exactly 42. Um, we generate some block this turn, we end up taking six. The alternate is to, like, Strike Strike Simmering Fury. I guess, yeah, why are we playing Vigilance, right? Vigilance gets us extra energy next turn, but do we need extra energy next turn? I don't think we do. Three energy should be enough for extra. So let's just play Simmering Fury then. We take 11 instead of 6, but we have a lot more lethal outs if he's at um, 30. Yeah, I guess I'm glad I did it that way. <laughs> we got lethal in a way that wouldn't have worked the other way. Uh, Windmill Strike is normally a terrible card, and it's a, kind of an excellent card when you have Establishment. Um, because by the time you've retained it twice, particularly if it's upgraded, the upgrade increases the scaling. Um, so if you retain it twice, it's zero mana for 20 damage. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Worship is also an incredible card with um, with establishment because being able to worship for zero is nuts. Um, we have some stance changing stuff. I'm a little bit afraid of retain because of Empty Fist. Um, Empty Fist is a bunch of our damage currently. So if we go into Divinity and then we want to use Empty Fist, that's a little bit awkward. We also have Eruption for some of our damage. So like there's two attacks that are kind of fighting to be the last attack when we're in Divinity Mode. It's kind of problematic. But Windmill Strike is normally so bad. We did also get a Prayer Wheel, so um, that actually changes uh, the complexion of the deck quite a bit. An early Prayer Wheel not only means that we're going to see a lot more cards, it means we're, we have a lot higher chance of seeing a specific card, and we see more total rare cards. Um, and that scales both linearly in the way you'd expect, right? Like if you see twice as many cards, you see twice as many rare cards. 
but it also scales better than that because each time you see a non-rare card, your chance of seeing a rare card increases. So if you see more total cards, you see more um, more rare cards. I suppose that that's encapsulated in the doubling, but um, but you you end up seeing a lot more rare cards than you would think. Um, nothing bad in the correct deck. Even a zero energy iron attack for the days in your deck it can be great if you play the correct cards. I mean, that card's just good all the time. I think you just have the wrong opinion on that card. <laughs> Um, uh, what is that? It's not Wild Strike. Um, uh, it's the uncommon, basically, version of Wild Strike. I love that card. Um, can you ever see more than one rare in a non-boss reward? Yes, you can. Um, you basically need to have, um, what is it called? Um, question card. Um, uh, but then you could see a rare as the first and last card. Yeah, I know exactly what card you're talking about. That's actually one of my favorite cards um, in Ironclad. I pretty much uh, auto-pick that in Act 1. Um, a lot of Ironclad decks end up uh, picking Feel No Pains and, um, and Evolve, and that card is really good with those. Um, so that card's like, it's really good in Act 1, and it's also really good in Act 4. Uh, but it's like, no, it's, it, it, honestly, it never sucks hard. It's great in Act 1 because it like, make, just makes you do so much more damage on your turns. Um, it, so it's great in Act 1. It's great in Act 4, because you usually have Evolve or Feel No Pain by that point. It's also great in Act 2, because it like just helps you resolve hallway fights and stuff. That's just, it's one of the best Iron Cloud cards. Yeah, <laughs> you're just like, you're way off track. <laughs> um, uh, I do not like Anger. We disagree on that card as well. Um... All right, we're gonna have to look up the name of that card because we're talking about it so much. Um, we are talking about Reckless Charge. Yeah, Reckless Charge is an amazing card, um, but uh, but Rage is dead. Rage. The problem with Rage is like there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fights where your card efficiency matters a lot, um, like Chosen, Time Lord, and um, the Heart. Um, uh, and in those fights, you really do not want to be playing Rage, um, outside of some really extreme situations, like you have um, Shuriken and Kunai, or you have like, um, you have like a Talk to the Hand and a, a Oriental Fan or something. Um, but, uh, yeah, Rage is, Rage is generally bad. It is insane in Act 1, that's true. If, if you can get enough card draw to support it. Um, okay, sorry, back to the question at hand. I'm really torn on this Wild Strike versus Worship thing. I guess we should take the Wild Strike since we're, like, behind in terms of attacks. We've only taken Empty Fist Consecrate. Um, and there's some, some anti-synergy with Worship, but, like... I'll be damned if, like, Establishment Worship isn't, like, an archetype that we could totally build uh, that's, like, really good for Act 4, and we're passing right now. And it's an uncommon, so we might never see it again. Um, and it feels really bad to take a Windmill Strike over that, uh, like, endgame package for, like, some kind of crappy Act 1 power. Um, but I think I have to do it. We did get past Gremlin Knob pretty easily. Um, but we kind of just got lucky, and Simmering Fury carried us. Uh, we're probably taking an upgrade next floor. Um, I was just thinking about that, Fibster. I think we're probably upgrading Establishment if we're taking Windmill Strike. Which is kind of paradoxical, because Windmill Strike itself has an, a pretty good upgrade. Um, so it's weird to take a card that needs an upgrade and then take another upgrade. Um, yeah, it does become an 8. Um, Yeah, exactly. But if we took Worship, we would have to upgrade Worship, right, to make it work with the establishment. I just, like... So you have to play Worship twice before you enter Divinity, right? And, like, I'm imagining, like, fighting Sentries or Gremlin Knob and trying to, like, find Worship, find Establishment, decost Worship, play Worship, shuffle, draw, 
find worship again, play worship a second time in a hand where we have a bunch of, of uh, attacks to like pay off the divinity. I just don't see it happening. Um, and I, I just, I, we like we have to pay attention to the fights that are in front of us or else we're going to lose them. So I think we have to pick a little bit more Um You mean the definition of innate in the context of Slave the Spire or the definition of innate outside the context of Slave the Spire? Um, now I feel really vulnerable. I'm at 30. I want to fight two elites. Um, if I decide that I don't want to fight this elite, I still have to fight two hard pool fights. We could definitely die here. Maybe we're supposed to, like, divert. No, that's... I'm not chickening out. Oh, good. Preserve. It's like, okay. Well, I feel a lot better now. Okay. Right, should be fine. Uh, that's pretty much the ideal turn one. I guess I would prefer to have had Windmill Strike in hand, but that's pretty much the only improvement. Um, there's no stance exit here, so I don't feel super comfortable um, playing like Eruption Empty Fist Simmering Strike or something. Um, so I guess we just Simmering F Fury and play Windmill Strike and stuff next turn. Wake him up then. Hopefully we redraw it empty fist, that'd be great. Oh, we did, wow. Um, we could just hold Windmill Strike. We've got enough energy to spend, uh, to do mo a bunch of things efficiently. Um, Consecrate's always happening. Um, I guess, hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll hold Windmill Strike so that we can empty fist. Just so much more damage than it would most make. It's just silly. Alright, we just need to block out for like two turns here. Um, we we'll set up to kill him. Um, we don't have lethal right now. So we'll just try to perfect the fight. And succeed. Cool. Easy. Sundial? Wow. Maybe this was supposed to be an infinite run. <laughs> Apparently Finster was on to something with the uh, with we should have picked an infinite. If we'd taken the empty empty uh, empty mind and the um, rush down, we'd be like 80% of the way there. Um Sundial was definitely a, a watch card for doing infinite stuff. Fruit juice is nice, too. Um, it should still be possible. Uh, I mean, we have a bunch of zero cost stuff. If we get, like, an unceasing top? Um, no, I guess that's probably not the way to think about it. So we need to get the hand down. We need to find a rush down. Um, and then, like, decost our eruption and find a one mana calm enter. get rid of a bunch of cards. We're pretty far away from it currently. Um, I don't hate pressure points here. Just picking a single pressure points. We have the establishment, so if we find Meditate, then Meditate is useful for both fishing out pressure points and decosting the deck. Um, probably not wise, though. Uh, Sash with and Bowling Bash are the other options. Probably Bowling Bash is better. It does seem like we have a lot of damage. I think skip is pretty reasonable. Um, I think we can probably handle this elite. Um, it can be um, Sentries or Knob. And Sentries Bowling Bash is really good. Sentries is probably the harder of the two. We do have Consecrate. Um, Uh, Sash, which is interesting as well. 
Sashup is nice because yeah, uh, if you're against either Hexaghost or Guardian, uh, the rounding from, from the weak is pretty relevant. I guess for all the Act 1 bosses, weak is, is pretty important, because if you can get weak on the, uh, the slime boss, um, then you can reduce his damage by like 12 or something stupid. It's not 12, it's like 8, but still. Um, Skip seems pretty good too, though. I think Skip is probably the, probably the pick here. I do like Bowling Bash. I think Bowling Bash is probably the best option. We don't... Um, first Voice is interesting, but we don't have uh, really the card draw or the medit Meditate to support that. Um, and it's a common, so we can we can go back into that later if we want to. Um, Bowling Bash adds a nice dimension to the deck, but uh, I don't think it's super necessary. If we were against Slime Boss, I'd probably pick Bowling Bash, but we're not. So it's a little bit dangerous to pick too many attacks because we're against Curtain. Yeah, exactly. Bowling Bash is really surprisingly strong. It's really easy to underestimate Bowling Bash, at least for me. But, like, getting through Act 2 hallway fights is, like, something that your deck has to actually do. And there's a lot of ways to not do it. Um, getting down the establishment seems good, but I guess Eruption Strike is also pretty good. So if we play Establishment, it's probably, like, Establishment, Simmering Fury, Strike. So we draw two extra cards and get an Establishment down. This fight's probably not long enough for establishment to do much, and we don't have any retained cards right now. I think we should go with the eruption line. Um, Windmill Strike probably splits him. Um, does 19 damage, puts him down to 28. Hey, Onsung! 28 is less than his split point of 34, but not by much. Um, he's attacking for 36, so he's probably attacking for 18. Um, if we can block some of the 18 with Vigilance Defend, we would still take 5. I think I'd rather split him than take 5, especially since we didn't develop um, establishments. This Windmill Strike is not getting decosted. It does get more damage if we wait, but I don't think the split. This split also keeps us in Wrath mode, which is, uh, which is nice. Consecrate's always happening. Aptifist kills one of them. Probably the one who's attacking for 24. Uh, then we, he's probably attacking for 8, so we could protect the block out. And then we're just dealing with one slime. Okay. Um... Empty Fist sets up the lethal next turn, and Vigilance walks out now. And another perfect fight in the bag. Alright, this is our first chance to pay off Prayer Wheel. Ragnarok, Bowling Bash, Prostrate. Really, they want us to pick multi-attacks here. Um, I think I think people were underestimating Bowling Bash last fall. I think Bowling Bash is really good. I think it was almost as good as Skip. Um, don't know about it being up against Ragnarok. I don't know what to feel about that. Let's come back to that after we look at the second one. Deus Ex Machina. Look, we got a we got a common um, we got a hallway fight with two rares in it. Somebody was asking if that was possible earlier. It's not. Possible. It's, not a, it's kind of cheating because it's not in the in an individual pick. But you see how uh, Ragnarok is the first one, and then um, Deus Ex Machina is the the sixth one. Because um, like. When you, each card has a chance of rolling rare, and then after you roll one, it resets down to negative two, and increases by one percent every time you don't roll a card. So it was like, after this it was negative two, then negative one, then zero, then like one percent, then two percent, and then we rolled the two percent successfully. You get Deus Ex Machina. Um, okay, uh... Uh, I believe Uncommon do add rare chance. Um, I think anything that's not rare adds rare chance. 
Could be wrong. Um, well, basic machina seems good, right? I guess there's a chance that we start overdrawing if we took, like, Rush Down Simmering Fury. Third Eye is also nice. Third Eye helps us filter and draw our zero cost stuff. Uh, Ragnarok is a nice card to decost with Meditate Establishment. Get that costing zero play at every turn. Um, if we pick Ragnarok, we're almost certainly picking Basic Machina because um, we would have a Ragnarok in the deck. We already have a wheel Windmill Strike and Unupgraded Eruption, so there's some stuff to spend energy on. Plus, Simmering Fury is drawing us hands that cost more energy to play. So if we don't pick Ragnarok, I think Third Eye is a reasonable pick. So if we don't pick Ragnarok, it's like Third Eye versus Basic Machina. And if we do pick Ragnarok. Let's see, if we don't pick Ragnarok, I don't think we're picking either of these two. We just passed on a Bowling Bash, and Prostrate is uh, not particularly good. So it's either Ragnarok or Skip here, and then this is either Deus Ex Machina, Third Eye, or Skip. It's Deus Ex Machina if we pick Ragnarok. It's either Third Eye or Skip if we pick, uh, if we don't. Actually, no, it could be any of the three if we don't pick it. I think I like Ragnarok, take Deus Ex Machina. Let's just take all the rares. Okay, uh, not a good situation here. Um, yikes. We can't quite afford Ragnarok, even if we uh, upgrade the Eruption. Bowling Mesh is a great card. Um, I'm not sleeping on Bowling Bash at all. Um, just couldn't, couldn't figure out how to make the deck need it. So this is the problem you run into with uh, Empty Cage starts, is like, I got rid of a defend, so now I have like only three defends, a Vigilance, and a Protect, and I just didn't have to draw any of them. So now we're losing 11 health, and like, if we lose 11 health, are we still going this way? I think we probably are, because we have three trees, but uh, that's rough. Um, let me just check and make sure we don't have lethal or option strike. Yes, only 21. It's more damage if we just drag rock. Do we have lethal with uh, Blessing of the Forge? That would be eruption double strike. Strikes would be upgraded. So we'd be doing 9 times 5, basically. It's 45 damage. It's pretty close. Um, eruption does not get any extra damage if you upgrade it, right? Uh, I think just Ragnarok. <laughs> Whoa, we got no attacks, no defense again? That's insane. How did that happen? Uh, wow. That's so bad. I can't believe this is... Oh my god. Um, wow. Um, I guess we should have picked Third Eye. Wait, is Consecrate Windmill Strike Empty Fist lethal? 5, uh, 12... 14. It is lethal. Okay, great. I'm not going to complain anymore. Who needs defensive cards? You can murder people. Um, probably going to drink that fruit juice to get the fear pot. I'll look at the card rewards first. Second protect seems good. Uh, there's a rushdown. If we want to try to do infinite stuff with sudden battle, rushdown is definitely going to be part of it. Uh, what is the block density? So we've got three defense, a vigilance, and a protect. That's five total cards, approximately one third. A little bit low. Um, almost certainly picking up this second protect. We could pick up flying sleeves too. I kind of dunked on flying sleeves early in the in the run um, because I was like, it's bad with Snicko Eye, and it's like not particularly good with it, better than Strike, and it's bad against Logaboolin. 
but like since then we've picked Ragnarok and establishment. So we're like committed to multi tax and we're also committed to establishment. So it like, um, it got way, way better. Uh, let me hold on for a second. I'm going to get some water. Hey, guitar. Everyone else can see me, but you can't. Secret streamer. Um, I kind of wish... I like standing desk. I really like the... Uh, I, I like standing while I work, and I like all the, the things about it. But I really like the chair stream meme. I like when, when streamers leave their stream, and it's a stream of just a chair. I think that's funny, but I don't get to do that because I don't have a chair. There's no chair here. Um, uh, second Simmering Fury is here too, I guess, technically. I think, I think I'd probably take Skip over Rushdown, honestly. Um, I do actually have this, this stool, so technically I do have kind of a standing chair. A chair is just a butt hug. Battle Mercy V2, 2020. Um, actually, maybe we pick Carve Rally and over Protect, because the Smite decosts too. Um, that's a lot of damage. Hmm. Nah, I'll take Protect and, and the Flying Slaves, I think. Now let's go beat up a Gremlin Nub. Um, vulnerable Potion, I think, is probably getting played. Establishment doesn't explicitly say that the cost reduction stops at zero. It would be kind of funny if it didn't, if Miracles started costing negative energy. Uh, Alright, so I think we're trying to get out of this fight without losing any health at all. Which means we're probably protecting here. And holding on to Flying Sleeves for um, Eruption. Anchor fairy in a bundle? Wow. Third protect? Do I ever? Do I dare? What's my limit for protects? Zero mana block for 12 is pretty good. Three, four, five, six block cards in the deck. This would be the seventh one, keeping us approximately at that one third. Okay, I'm gonna take a third protect. I'm an absolute madman. I mean, we have establishment upgraded. Like, the the more likely we can get protect in our opening hand, the better, basically. Alright. 
They are hitting for 18. Block is useful. And I guess they're only hitting for 12 because I've murdered one. Check this getting played. Uh, I guess I'll split one. Um, kill this one, kill the other one. Shut down. Hooray, there's a Sands of Time. Make that cost zero really quick. Perseverance is a lot of retained block cards. Uh, Second Simmering Fury Crescendo is basically always already upgraded because we just retain it for one turn, cost zero. And just Lucky is also here. Uh, I think we're skipping all these. Um, do we need the damage? Are we picking Sands of Time? Sands of Time hits really hard. Having it cost zero after retaining for two turns is pretty nice too. I think Perseverance is probably worse than Skip, so it's follow-up. It's either Sands of Time or nothing, I think. Picking Sands of Time and Windmill Strike makes me feel, like, kind of sad for Act 3. But maybe it's okay. I really want to find some Strength Scaling with my Ragnarok Flying Sleeves. That counts great. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think we need Sands of Time, so I'll skip it. Seeing six cards and skipping them all. Alright, I think we can upgrade here. Best upgrade is probably Ragnarok. Uh, it gets an 11 damage upgrade. Not a lot in terms of damage per energy upgrade. It's only like, I don't know, slightly less than three. Um, but in terms of absolute damage, it's quite a bit. Uh, windmill Strike's got a nice upgrade, too. I've mentioned that a couple times. Maybe we grab the Windmill Strike upgrade. Flying Sleeves is, is considerable. Uh, that one gets the decosts really quickly. So, upgraded Flying Sleeves does 12 damage. Upgraded Windmill Strike does 15 damage after retaining it once. Uh, kind of nuts. Uh, this is probably not a Sneko Eye run. So I wouldn't feel too bad upgrading Eruption here. It kind of looks like a Sneko Eye run, because we've got like three Protects and a Ragnarok and a Windmill Strike, but the only reason we have three Protects and a Windmill Strike is because we're decosting them, and uh, Sneko Eye is pretty irritating with this establishment. Um, If we get if we upgrade Ragnarok with Deus Ex Machina, we can play Eruption Ragnarok, or even without it, if we're in Calm, play Eruption Ragnarok, and that's just crazy. Nine damage plus thirty six times two, seventy two eighty one damage. That's a lot of damage. Uh, is the is the establishment beta art OP? I have not. I'm unaware. People, I've seen people use this beta art, but I don't get it. I mean, obviously, like, she's behind the desk. She's part of the establishment. Um, but, like, so what is this blue thing? The other things are all relics. The blue thing I don't recognize. Is it an oddly smooth stone? I like this one better. This one's so dramatic. Oh, bam. 48 decks versus champ. Double Nightmare footwork. Oh, I love Double Nightmare. Uh, double Nightmare is my favorite. <laughs> um, double Nightmare Wraith form is my is my uh, my uh, all-time favorite. I had a Double Nightmare um, Wraith form Tungsten Rod against the heart. Ugh. Such payback for all the stupid heart stuff he did to me over the years. Um, 
<laughs> Honestly, in a double nightmare t deck, like a third nightmare is sometimes a tank. Because it's like, even if you have well laid plans, and you basically need well laid plans for that deck, even if you had well laid plans, having three nightmares just means you get set up faster. Um, and it can be pretty hard to find your six energy turn. Or, uh, I guess you only need three energy, but, but to find the three energy to play the Nightmare. Or maybe they were Nightmare Pluses, which only cost two, but... Um. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Nightmare and Sneko Eye are really good. That, was, that sounds like a win. Easy. Double Nightmare Sneko Eye is nuts. Uh, okay, so we're smithing. What are we smithing? Uh, I think just Windmill Strike. Ragnarok is fun, but Windmill Strike is, like, super good in the Guardian fight. You died to Reptomancer. Oh, man. Tragedy. Snekalai can kill you. Snekalai just chooses when you die. Um, when and if and how. Um... Okay, so Ragnarok gets an additional 11 damage. How long does it take Windmill Strike to get an additional 11 damage? Well, there is a drawn played rate problem with Ragnarok, which is when you draw Ragnarok, it's hard to play because it costs 3 energy, and this is a 3 energy deck. Um, uh, Ragnarok... Okay, so Ragnarok does 11 damage, but I, let's say we only play Ragnarok half the time it comes into our hand. So Ragnarok is sort of worth, like, five damage every time we see it. Windmill Strike gets uh, three additional damage off the bat and one additional damage every time you hold it. And we're definitely going to hold it at least twice. So Windmill Strike gets five damage for zero at minimum. Uh, and it's more consistent than Ragnarok. But I think, but honestly, Ragnarok is still close. I think we'll take the Windmill Strike. All right. Snickle Ironclad Corruption Monger Jones. Yeah, it's a good combo. Um, uh, all right. No reason to do anything but establishment double strike here. Hopefully we can split him next turn or draw some protects. Um, does Ragnarok Empty Fist split? It does. So I think we will do that. Uh, maybe this is the Blessing of the Forge turn. I do like Blessing of the Forge quite a bit with uh, Deus Ex Machina. Upgrading those Miracles is really nice. We already have two upgraded cards in hand, so... We are wasting a little bit. I guess I'd like to hit a Protect. But if we don't do it now, we're wasting a Miracle. But even if we do do it now, we're still going to Ragnarok Empty Fist, so... Oh wait, if we if we do it now, we could just Ragnarok? No, he's at 37, so he'd be over by one. Alright, see you around, Guitar. Um, yeah, so I won't use it now, I'll wait. Alright, well I got all three protects, so I guess I'll use it. played the windmill strike there without taking any damage, but um, there's not really any reason to. Uh, Alright, Simmering Fury and Protect should probably happen, and I guess that's all that's happening. And windmill strike is hitting for 50. Um, that seems good. Uh, are we going to Empty Fist? It looks like we're going way over the 20 damage that he's going to block for, so I think the order probably doesn't matter very much, so we'll end with Empty Fist. What's the power have on? Uh, you've played 0 on Watcher, but 20 of 75 cards seem... Yeah, I don't... It's been a long time since I did the unlocks, and I wasn't paying a lot of attention when I did, um, so I don't know if you've unlocked this card yet. Uh, but this card's called Establishment. Um, it's uh, basically what we're building around. Um, 
We play it on, it's a power we play on turn one, and it makes our retain cards reduce in cost. Um, the big combo with that is not only with the cards that naturally retain, uh, but, uh, but with, car, with the card Meditate. Um, here, I'll, I'll pull up Meditate for you. Um, and Meditate causes an arbitrary card to be retained. Um, so, uh, hey Simply Aces, thanks for the follow. So since Meditate can cause other cards to be retained, you can cause your entire deck to cost zero um, over the course of a long fight. Um, it does not work with Pyramid. Uh, Pyramid does not ca cause your cards to be retained. It causes you to not discard at the end of the turn, which is apparently different. Uh, there's also some, some very subtle um, differences between retaining and um, pyramid. If you if you have both pyramid and retain cards, the the for some reason, and I can't explain this, the retain cards will move to the right of the hand at the end of the turn. Um, so that's something you should expect, I guess. Hand positioning, I think, never matters in this game. Does it never matter? Yeah, there should be some hand positioning stuff. Hand positioning is fun. Um, Alright, just absolutely beating up Guardian here. Uh, yeah, Outcast is fun. It'd be really fun in Slay the Spire, too. I think it'd be more fun in Slay the Spire than it is in Hearthstone. Because Slay the Spire, like, your hand is really dynamic, right? Like, you play a big portion of your hand every turn. So, like, in Hearthstone, you have this problem where it's, like, if you're playing Demon Hunter and you have any, any like, ex any expensive cards, you, it, you feel bad putting Outcast cards in your deck because the expensive cards will get stuck on the left. So you have to play all the Outcast cards the turn you draw, or, like, as soon as you draw them. Which makes it feel bad to draw cards, because you you end up drawing cards with no energy or something. Um, uh, but you don't have that problem in Slay the Spire because you like draw a new hand every turn. It, when the without um, pyramid, but if you're picking pyramid and you have outcast cards, then like you're in good shape. Uh, I do play a Hearthstone. I play a lot of Hearthstone. I actually used to work for Blizzard on Hearthstone, um, uh, so played a lot of Hearthstone. Um, Alright, I think we're going to block out this turn. I guess I'll just block out with Vigilance Defend and save the Protects. Seems really unnecessary. But I'm going to do it anyway. Oh yeah, I did see that there was a middle middle card thing. I don't, that, I don't know why that's... Middle card is so fiddly. That's like so much less fun than outside card. Because middle card is like, how many cards are in my hand? Is it an odd or even number? And like, okay, so there's three here and three here. I don't know. I don't like middle card stuff. I don't know why you would do that. Maybe, like, if you change the UI so the middle card is huge and the other cards are, like, on the side of it, um, that could work. But, like, that's that kind of distorts the game as well. All right, I want to play Ragnarok, um, but he is doing a thing. Oh, protective head record. Uh, I don't know. Um, um, excuse me. myself so I could blow my nose, but then I forgot to unmute myself. Part of me wants to play Eruption. The Eruption Ragnarok would be fun this turn. Uh, I think we're pretty much on track to not take any damage here, so uh, we'll just cruise a little bit, a little bit softer than that. We have Empty Fist, but like we can already play our whole hand and we're in, we're in, uh, Calm. Uh, probably Windmill Strike and Flags, these are waiting until we are in Wrath mode. 
which part was happening the turn after next. Um, <laughs> he thinks he's gonna vent steam. In reality, he's going to die. Take 50. Okay. Um, blast me, day before the scroll. Wow, this is some good options. Um, hmm. Data form doesn't really seem necessary since we already have like an energy manipulation mechanic and a Deus Ex Machina. Um, so I think it's like Blast Mirror Scrawl. Scrawl seems really good with a bunch of zero cost stuff. Um, you know what else seems good? Cat food. That's what Coconut says. I think it's all about that cat food. Uh, I don't think you need to draw with that many retain cards. I think you and I have the opposite opinion on what to do after the deck costs zero. Because after the deck costs zero, I really want to just like play the whole hand and then scroll and play a whole another hand. Because um, that sounds like it would win a lot of hallway fights. Um, my opinion on Blasphemy is that it is amazing. Blasphemy is like one of the best cards in the game. Um, I don't think it's the best card in the game because somebody in my chat was claiming it was the best card in the game, and I was like, well, no, Apparition's the best card in the game. And since then, um, I, I've come up with a number of other cards that I think are probably better. Um, Echo Form, I think it's a better card. Um, uh, but Blasphemy is definitely, like, among the best cards in the game. It's in the discussion. Uh, and we already have, like, Ragnarok and Windmill Strike and, um, and stuff, right? So... Um, Apparition gets beat by boot. Good point. Good point. Um, although, the enemies never get boot. So there you go. There's some... Put that in your noodle. Wiggle it around a little bit. Uh, 5,000 damage whirlwind. What? Um... So Blasphemy is, like, super good. And it's true, I have never played Downfall. I have it installed, um, but I haven't played it. Uh, hmm. Blasphemy. So, okay, so Blasphemy is primarily helpful in hallway fights, where it's just like, oh, great, the hallway fight is over now because I have I have Blasphemed. Um, Blasphemy also, if we can upgrade it, has Retain, and then that makes it cost zero, although the cost of Blasphemy is not usually an issue because functionally it costs negative two already because uh, entering Divinity gains you three energy. Um, unless for some reason you're already in Divinity, and if you're already in Divinity, why are you playing Blasphemy? What are you doing with your life? Maybe you had a, that potion that plays random cards from the top of your deck? I don't know. I can't judge you. Um, Scrawl is really good with Sundial. I like Scrawl a lot. I see. You wanna, you wanna BM people, you wanna flex. Makes sense. The real flex, though, is like getting too intangible and a tungsten rod and then playing Blasphemy and just eating the damage and then killing your opponent. Being like, not even God could kill me. Bam. Um, yeah, it, it does function as damage. So if you have a buffer, um, if you have intangible, you, you do survive it. I'm not sure why it's damage and it doesn't just kill you. Um, but it is damage, technically. Um, uh, 
Um, it's you can't cleanse it. It's not a debuff. It's a buff. <laughs> For whatever reason. Uh, so yeah, you also can't avoid it with um, artifact charges. No, yeah, you can't orange pellets it. Uh, I think it's scrawl here though. I think we're already pretty good at at hallway fights with uh, three protects. I think we're not going to be losing too much health to those. Um, although this is inherently a scaling deck, right? We try to establishment and then like establish things. And um, can we sidebar for a second on like establishment? Like, okay, so in this. Watcher is stamping something, right? And in the beta art, she's clearly, like, sitting at a desk, like, being part of the establishment. And so this is... I think this this fictionally establishes the fact that Watcher is, like, part of the Spire's bureaucracy. Um, but, like, the Spire has a bureaucracy? What? Like, there's a government? Like, what, what, what does this mean? Like, why? What? Um... I mean, it's probably just a joke um, about, like, so Establishment is a good name for this card because you get, you, like, establish your cards, right? Um, and then they're, like, Establishment, her, her, that means the government. But, like, what? Why is there government? And there's, like, a city, too, right? Act 2 is the city. So, like, I guess it makes sense for there to be a government, but, like, there's also, like, a hell of a lot of slavery <laughs> and, like, uh, like a, a lot of cultist action, muggings. So it doesn't really seem like there's room in that world for a bureaucracy, but apparently there is a bureaucracy. Yeah, and then, like, and then there's also the relationship between the Watcher and Time Lord. So, like, does Time Lord run the government? Because, like, when you enter the Time Lord fight as Watcher, he says, never liked you. But for everybody else, he says something something about time. I don't remember what he says to everybody else. But he, he like, clearly previously knew Watcher. Um, so I guess Time Lord is, like, the head of the government. <laughs> King Time Lord. Uh, all right, that was a little sidebar. Sorry about that. Um, so Scrawl, right? Scrawl. Uh, Scrawl helps us get set up, draws us to ASX from Nakata, gets us some powers. Um, we play Establishment on turn one, get some zero cost stuff, play the zero cost stuff, play Scrawl, redraw the zero cost stuff, win the game. Um, gets us, uh, we could play like Ragnarok twice a turn. <laughs> um, with Scrawl. But if we play Blasphemy, then we can just play Ragnarok once a turn. It does triple damage. Um, Time Eater is in the government. Watcher is an inspector. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. We have company. Hmm. I think he just says, like, ah, company. Time Lord's a big, old, big weird snail. What a weirdo. Uh, people say that they have similar damage. I don't get that. They have, like, very similar character designs. They're both, like, wrapped in purple shawls. I'm just going to take a scroll. See, like, that looks pretty similar to, to Time Lord's shell slash robes situation. Uh, okay, so since we picked scroll. We have a little bit of curse mitigation because we have a bunch of card draw. So we wouldn't mind the curse from Calling Bell too badly. Um, we do have a fairy in a bottle, so Sozu gets a little bit of an advantage there. We've only got functionally one potion slot, so we're not missing out on a ton of value. We also don't have, like, White Beast Statue or anything. Um, although we could find White Beast Statue, which would be very unfortunate. Black Star is nice, too. We do have a Preserved Insect. Um, Act 2 Black Star is nice. We don't super need an Energy Relic. Uh, because of the Deus Ex Machina and the establishment. Uh, so it's pretty easy to skip Sozu here. Um, but Sozu is among the best energy relic, energy relics, and energy relics are usually the best choices here. Um, 
We also took an empty cage, so like our deck is decently small, although that empty cage has been somewhat counteracted by the prayer wheel, so we've kind of picked up more cards to and get, kind of gotten back to the normal size. Uh, Calling Bell could give us the, the, full, the full ship captain experience, become a boat. Sundial kind of looks like a boat in the same way as the old art for ancient tea set looked like a boat. Where it's like a little shark fin sail thing. So that, that kind of counts as boat, boat material. Um, so the big reason for Calling Bell for me is um, we really want strength scaling because we have a Ragnarok and a Flying Sleeves. Um, and uh, Calling Bell is actually really likely to get you strength scaling. It's like it's like a one in four chance or something of getting you strength scaling. Uh, it's like by far the most common outcome from Calling Bell is, is strength scaling. Um, you can also get things like Unceasing Top, which might actually be useful in this deck. Um, although Calling Bell doesn't interact super well with Unceasing Top, obviously, because it gives you curse. But, you know, we could get, like, Unceasing Top and Blue Candle, um, which would be kind of insane. Um, uh, it does get you, I guess, it, more than Strength Scaling, it gets you, like, um, like little defensive tools. So, like, the boat stuff, um, Fossilized Helix, um... The other ones, uh, Abacus, stuff like that. Um, but the strength scaling, I think, is what we're really looking for. And strength scaling with particularly Duvu Doll is really good with Calling Bell because you're going to get two strength. Um, let's see, what else could we get from, from Calling Bell? Let me look up relics real quick. Just to help me think. Um, you get Pednib. Pednib's always good with Watcher. Uh, you get Potion Belt. that would help free up some, some spot, some slots from the, uh, the Relic Bar since we've got the Fairy in the bottom. There's just a bunch of stuff that's, like, just generically good, like Pantograph and Duality. Um, any of the bottles. Actually, bottles are probably bad here because we don't need Bottled Tornado to make Establishment innate. We don't have any other powers. Actually, Bottled Flame would be really good for Wild Strike, Windmill Strike. Actually, do I want that for Act 3? I think I probably still do. But Blackstar is, is really good. Um, yeah, Cloak Clasp. Yeah, there's a lot of defensive options for, um, for Calling Bell, for sure. Um, the Old Coin would be nice. Violet Lotus would be nice. Oh, wait, we can't get Violet Lotus. That's the boss one. Um, Gambling Chip is amazing. Golden Eye. E even just like a Frozen Egg would be amazing. Uh, we're not exactly behind on relics, though. Uh, that's true. Blackstar would get us more relics overall. Um, yeah, actually, that's a really good point. Why would we pick... Calling Bell over Black Star. Calling Bell gives us more relics right now. Um, but there's no way we get fewer than three relics over the course of the run. Yeah. I. You know what? I don't, I don't, I've never thought about Calling Bell versus Black Star with that level of clarity, so thank you for that, Mavfaf. I just, like, it's 100%. It's just, like, Calling Bell's relics now... Blackstar is relics later, and it's like, Blackstar is way better than Calling Bell, because we don't need it now. Like, we're fine for Act 2, I think. Um, um, so, I guess it's between Sozu and Blackstar. Sozu's still reasonable. Uh, we do have a, a, what should we call it, Ragnarok. So being able to play, like, Establishment Ragnarok on turn 1 pretty useful if they're not attacking. If they are attacking, then you can play like Protect, Defend, Ragnarok with, um, what should we call it? Day 6 mana. Yeah, let's take Blackstar. Alright. Hyper Beam Guy. Alright, so we really need Elites now. Uh, 
and the max we can get is three, and there's only one path that does it. I guess there's two paths. It's starting here, and then one of these two guys. Probably this one, because of the, uh, the shop. Got some money, so I would like to go to a shop if possible. Act two question marks are really good. Doesn't look like a shop is going to be possible. I guess we can go here, so we're trading a question mark for a shop. Um, yeah, Blackstar does not have any, any such guarantees, so you follow the normal uh, relic probability distribution, which is fair. Um, I think Blackstar probably still gets more rare relics over the course of the run, but it's probably like 1.5, right, rare relics. Uh, what is the ratio? Um, does it really not say on the wiki? Weird. Yeah, the, the wiki just completely does not talk about the difference between common, uncommon, and rare. Huh. I know that, like, different, um, different chests, because there's, like, a large, medium, and small chest, different chests um, have different drop possibilities, right? Because, like, a small chest can't drop a rare relic, for example. Um... I think we'll take the extra question mark here. Um, let's see, do we want bites or apparitions? I think we'd probably say yes to either. Um, we don't need them to survive, though. So maybe we do take the shot. Question mark drop. Plus, if this question mark is a um, gold for curse, um, or if it's mausoleum, so like curse for relic, we get rid of the curse here. There's quite a few question marks to give you a curse. Even the... Um, uh, the altar event, because we don't have um, Golden Idol. Um, two to eight relics, so an average of five. Um, I think it's it's hard to imagine getting less than five relics, because um, you get the guaranteed Act 4-1, the guaranteed Mega Elite, and then like in the, in the act that you don't do the Mega Elite, you're probably going to be doing either two or three. Um, and in the act you're doing the Mega Elite, it's hard to, hard to path around doing at least one more usually. Um, so I'd say four is the minimum, and then like, I don't know, the maximum is like seven or something. Um, yeah, I think I like the get a curse, get rid of it at the shop plan since we're not going to the slate shop, most likely. I mean, you do get a relic from Act 4, and, like, the, the heart is a, a considerable challenge. Um, establishment versus Ragnarok. The story is old as time. Uh, if we play Establishment, we're playing Strike as well. So Ragnarok is doing 25 damage versus 6, so we're getting 19 extra damage for skipping Establishment. Um, this fight is not a race, so I think I will go slow. I'll try to not lose any health. Uh, right. Vigilance Defend is probably happening. Um, we can, like, Vigilance Defend, Miracle, Empty Fist, Miracle Scrawl, and draw nine cards with two energy. Drawing nine cards is really good with establishment, too. Um, what's, uh, what are the interactions with White Beast Singing Bowl question card that you're referencing? Um, Draw nine cards, get a bunch of retained stuff, decost them all. We um, I think not going into wrath is correct. We could go into wrath next turn. Um Oh yeah. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yes. Those are not particularly useful in, in uh, as an Act 4 rewards. It really bugs me that you can get White Beast statue as an Act 4. 
reward. Like, Singing Bowl you can technically use, but, like, White Beast Statue literally does nothing. It just, like... Darn it, game. Darn it. Uh, if we do Simmering Fury, he is going to do 22 damage next turn. So we should either be killing him or confident that we can switch back. Uh, there's two cards that let us switch back. And we are drawing... Uh, Simmering Fury would try to draw seven, but it would fail because we were retaining four cards. So we would draw six. Two of these and four other cards. Fairly likely to be able to turn back, but I'm not so confident that I'm going to do that. Oh, we're actually retaining five cards. I underestimated that. I did draw one. Um... Yeah, my level of information about the re disabled relics is the same as uh, uh, Hatchy Tank. I, I know that some are turned off. There's some that are turned off uh, that from like floor 49 on. I don't know the exact specifics. I just remember seeing seeing the patch notes. Um, all right, so we need to block for 22. That's happening. I think this is happening. So we need seven more. Just throw a protect in there. I think we're going to hold these until we go into Rathmon. Um, Eruption, Ragnarok, uh, Consecrate, Windmill Strike, Flying Sleeves is probably lethal. This does 50, 59. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we ended up doing that perfect. Um, Cut Through Fate is interesting. This is the third sh shot we've had at Rushdown. Um, uh, no, I think I've gotten question card from, from Act 4 Elites. Maybe that's not true. Maybe I'm misremembering. Um, what do we think about Rushdown? I've passed the Rushdown... But I think things have changed a little bit since then. Hmm. I, I do like Rushdale. And drawing lots of zero-cost cards and playing them all at the same time is, is pretty fantastic. Um... So I think Cut Through Fate and Rushdown, they're both reasonable. I think I want to pick one of them and not both, because they're both card draw approaches. And I don't want to overcommit to card draw all at once. So I think I'm going to pick Rushdown. And not Cut Through Fate. Okay. Aha! Relic for a curse. I talked about exactly this option. Um, although, we have enough gold to just buy it. <laughs> um, and that's probably better, because um, removing the removing the curse would cost 75, so we'd only be netting 10 gold. Um, I think the 10 gold is probably not worth it. A kunai. Well, that's another way of scaling. Makes the card draw even better. Uh, I like Kunai quite a bit. Um, definitely I would pick up another Flying Sleeves now. Um, we're still going this way? Yeah, we want to get three Elites and, and uh, fighting this guy is the only way to get there, so we're going right. Uh, membership card. Um... Um, okay, so I've said a lot of things about us being strong in Act 2, and I think that if we continue to think that we're strong in Act 2, we should pick membership card. It gives us slightly less gold currently, um, but uh, yeah, it seems like uh, membership card is pretty good. Yeah, exactly. 85 gold for a kunai. Thank please and thank you. Yeah, I think we grab a membership card. We don't have any uh, gold synergy, but... Membership card is so good on its own. It does prevent us from buying Nunchaku. 
Um, I think we're probably not going to the second shop, although maybe the membership card convinces us to. I think we're probably going to the fire question mark, looking for like thwack and bites and stuff. Um, but you are correct. Uh, I said I would take a second flying sleeve like 40 seconds ago, so here's my chance to, to follow up on that. Uh, we can afford flying sleeves and fire pot, or I guess we could afford flying sleeves card remove. That's pretty good. Hey, guitar. Welcome back. I almost welcomed myself back because I was reading your comment while I was speaking. And uh, sometimes I say the word that I'm reading. Um, Contrablade is probably not good, would be my read. Um, uh, uh, contextually, right? Contrablade is okay um, as like a meow bonus. Um, if you have Contrablade, you're probably looking for Deva form. I think the problem with Contrablade is like, okay, so Contrablade is kind of the dream payoff for like um, Watcher energy manipulation stuff. And Watcher has some pretty decent energy manipulation, right? Deva form. Um, the problem is that like the dream is not like how it usually works. Um, and so what ends up happening a lot is you pick Deva form or like collect, and then you just get, you pick a lot of copies of cut through fate and you don't, cause like cut through fates, you can play every turn. Whereas conjure blade, you only get to pay it off, pay it off once. <laughs> so like if you play conjure blade while you're at 10 energy, the next turn you have 11 energy and now your way of spending all the energy is gone. Um, and Cut Through Fate doesn't have that problem. Um, so I, I usually am against Conjure Blade, but if you if you picked like, if you have a collect or something and you don't have Deva form, uh, then Conjure Blade is excellent. Um, so if you, if you can find like Chemical X collect Conjure Blade, like you're in great shape. Um, and that's honestly, that's the master realities. Um, dream, right? If you have Collect Conjure Blade Master Reality, um, you're pretty happy with that deck, I think. That's like the, right, that's the, that's the happiest you're ever going to be with, um, with Master Reality. And unfortunately, Mint Chocolate is correct, um, that this is, this is a dream that's a little bit too perfect, um, so that's something you should be s suspicious of. Um, uh, okay, so I think we're just going to do Flying Sleeves Card Remove. Exactly. The something, the thing you always try to do, and then you realize, oh wait, I can't just like build my deck. I have to, I have to craft the deck by picking one card per floor and then surviving the fights in the middle, right? Um, is card remove better than fire pot? Do we need fire pot? Fire pot's very helpful for slavers and um, gremlin leader. Less helpful for book of stabbing. Um, but still helpful. I think the problem with Fire Pot is we have to pick Fire Pot and then not get a potion twice in a row. And our potion percent is like 50 and then 60%, so we're like pretty likely to get a potion. So I think Flying Sleeves card removes probably it. Okay. We did it. We navigated a shop. All right, already blocked out this turn, so establishment is happening. I guess we could windmill strike, um, but we might as well just wait until we can like knock a bird down with it. Okay, flying sleeves is good at bird fighting. Um, Uh, we can double flying sleeves, one of the birds, probably this one, knock him down, and then protect, defend, and take one. Uh, seems okay. Swish, swish. Swish, swish. Sticks to you. How does the playtest reward work? Is it true that it's about a game you are making? And then a cute little emoji. I looked over the name to try and remember this, the name of the Simpsons character, but the emote name is not very insightful, unfortunately. 
uh, so I don't remember the guy's name. Uh, yes, it, so you're correct. It is about the game that I'm making. Um, so I'm a game developer. There's probably a lot of people here, probably some people don't know. I'm a game developer, um, and I am making a game. Ralph, thank you. My goodness, Ralph Wiggum. Everybody in chat, come in with the rescue. Uh, it's about a game that I'm making. Um, I'm making a roguelike. Uh, and there's a lot of different things that people can mean when they say roguelike. And I try not to be like a, um, a grammar pedant uh, too often uh, because it's um, both wrong-headed and unhelpful. Um, <laughs> and I try to be neither of those things. Uh, but in this case, it, it's it, I, I'm going to make some clarifications just because, like, what do I, you mean by roguelike, right? You could mean anything. Well, I, so I, I mean sort of the, like, classical definition of roguelike before sort of the modern era of roguelikes. So it's like a the turn-based strategy in which you control a single character. Um, and not only is... Um, uh, is there per it, pr procedural generation and permadeath, um, but also like it's it's presented as a top-down tactical turn-based strategy game, um, where that's like a role-playing uh, game. Um, so I'm actually not leaning super into the procedural generation angle um, uh, yet. Uh, currently, I think the the main component of the procedural generation is like how the player gets skills. Uh, I definitely like built. I built a skill generation engine, so like I have a thing that can generate skills, and probably that's how you're gonna like choose your rewards. Um, but currently, it's just like it's a it's a series of boss fights. So you just like go into a floor and you fight a boss. Um, and I've really focused on a couple of things. Um, I want it to really feel like tactical and crunchy. So like all the numbers are really small. All the decisions you're making are really important. Um, and it's also like very difficult, so like you can just die if you do the wrong thing. Um, yeah, and the the graphics are currently quite terrible, um, so it's not like a, like going to be beautiful. It, it's it's presented in the style of a, of an old school roguelike. Currently, uh, there will definitely be a, a higher graphical fidelity um, version of of it. Um, although I think I'll keep it accessible as a a text based uh, game as well. Yeah, exactly. No, it's it's ASCII art. Yeah. I mean, an ASCII art in only the, like, the most charitable possible interpretation, right? It's like, your character is a single character, right? He's an at sign. <laughs> so it's like, it's technically ASCII art, but... Um, um, yeah, Onslaught knows what's up. <laughs> Enemies are also things. Um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, let's see, did I answer all the questions? Uh, yes, it's, so if you redeem the playtest reward, then you get to do a playtest. Um, I was planning on doing one this Friday. That's coming up kind of soon, um, but I, I, think I, I think I'm still planning on doing that. So um, it should, you should plan on that taking about an hour um, of your time, and it would be like we would get on a video call and I would watch you play for about an hour and ask you a bunch of questions. Is the vibe. Um, all right. That was a lot of talking. Uh, Vigilance Empty Fist does a lot of stuff. Um, uh, blocks for eight. We have 12, 16 damage incoming. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you should you should redeem it if you've got the got the points, the bread bucks. Excuse me. Um, I think I should reduce the cost of Talk About X because nobody ever redeems Talk About X because everybody who has five thousand points is saving up for the playtest thing. <laughs> And I like I like to talk about extra word. That's fun. Um, all right. So how do I kill all the birds this turn? I have a Ragnarok and a Consecrate, and it seems like that should be really good here. Um, but I don't get to know who the Ragnarok hits until after I do Vigilance, Empty Fist, Miracle, Ragnarok. Um, I guess we can guarantee three hits on this bird with. Um, Consecrate, Empty Fist, Windmill Strike. Um. Ooh, Bob Fava offering free playtest. Wow. Um. Okay, so let's just see if we can if we can hit him with one proc of Ragnarok. Come on, Ragnarok, hit this guy one time. All right, great job, Ragnarok. Uh, we'll go ahead and kill this one. Hmm. 
Yeah, okay. Fall Guys. I haven't played Fall Guys. I'm not very qualified to talk about it. Um, it seems like it's sort of a fun little um, um, uh, sort of physics-based um, brawler. Um, yeah, it, it's, it seems like a, a, a lot of fun. Um, uh, yeah, I wish I had more to say about Fall Guys right now. It, it reminds me a lot of, um, what was that game called? Uh, Little Big Planet. The way that I experienced Little Big Planet was always that, like, a couple of, me and a couple of friends would, like, go into a um, Little Big Planet level and we would never finish it because we would always just be, like, slapping each other off the edge. And uh, that was basically the whole game. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely play other games. Um, the uh, Sir Artemal introduced me to a game yesterday, um, which is pretty good. Uh, it's like an Egyptian-themed roguelike. Um, I don't, uh, I don't have a super positive recommendation of it, but if people want to check out other other roguelikes, they're sort of roughly in the same vein as what I'm talking about. Here's one. Um, also, Into the Breach is something I recommend really highly. Um, Yeah, I think it probably is Protect Defend, unfortunately. Uh, as much as I want to play, like, Protect Scrawl, like, I don't know what the good outcome for that is. Uh, it was not Scarab of Ra. What's Scarab of Ra? No, you posted a link, but links are disabled. I must have tricked you by posting my own link. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I, I have not owned an old Mac, so I can see why I missed out on that one. Um, double defend blocks out. Um, probably one of Flying Sleeves this nerd so he doesn't get back up. And double defend seems fine. I guess I'll Simmering Fury too. No, we're getting lethal whether or not we Simmering Fury, but whatever. Draw some cards. Um, Flying Sleeves Eruption Strike is would knock him down, but we can't afford that. Uh, he's sitting for 15 if we Vigilance, so we can like Flying Sleeves Vigilance Protect. <laughs> Best Egyptian adventure and 3D maze. Oh man. 1987 Public Domain Game Awards. Man. That sounds like that sounds like a really fun uh just like thing to be involved in. I wish that I was there. <laughs> it's so prodigious and yet so stupidly specific. Is this, is this fight over yet? What, why are we still here? Okay, there we go. A regen pot. Wow. Second shot at pressure points, an empty body, and a crush joints. Also here. There's the worship we skipped last time. A prey plus. Um, it's funny how prey plus is like almost gives you as much mantra as worship, but the four to five breakpoint is massive. Right? It's like the difference between having to play. Uh, two cards and three is just like such a huge difference. Um, if we had picked two, if we picked the earlier worship and we picked this one, we would be highly into divinity stuff. Um, what's Chandelier? Uh, man, I'm learning all this stuff today. This is great. Oh man, somebody totally redeemed an exercise reward too. I just wasn't paying attention. Um, Oh, shoot. I'm trying to remember stuff. Okay. Um, uh, inner Peace is nice, too. I feel like Inner Peace 
sort of jives with what we're doing. What are we doing? What is this deck? This is just an establishment deck. Oh. I mean, if you want it to be that, I guess I could do that, sure. If you wanna if you wanna spend Maybe I should make a separate re reward for that. Or I mean, really I should make my description of playtest more clear. Oh no, it's pretty clear. You get to playtest the current build of my game. Yeah, if you, if you just click on playtest, um it, it'll tell you. Um Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Magic is fun. I don't know. I feel like if I play either Magic or Hearthstone on stream, like, most people are like, oh, I wanted to watch Slay the Spire and leave. And I don't really feel like I'm uh, qualified to compete with the, like, the current crop of uh, Hearthstone and Magic streamers. Um, I think it's pretty reasonable that I could have, like, chosen um, Hearthstone instead of Slave Aspire to, um, to stream, uh, but, um, I don't know. I guess there's just a lot of competition for Hearthstone streamers. I guess I would have, I would have fought my way up for a while. Um, honestly, uh, I've tried a lot of custom runs of Slave Aspire, um, but, like, haven't, I, I don't actually enjoy them very much. I, like, I tr keep trying, trying to find a way to, like, do a fun one. Uh, and, like, I did this whole series where I did all the, the permutations of uh, of all the colors. So I did, like, whatever, blue defect, or, sorry, green defect, and, like, you know, um, red-green watcher and stuff. Like, I did I did every single combination. Uh, and it took me forever. It took me, like, a month. Um, yeah, blue defect. Um, but uh, but it, it the, the approach was, like, hamstrung by, like, um, by not getting a, a Neow bonus. And then, like, I kind of wanted to, like, do it again, but this time give myself the the starting Rare Relic modifier, because um, Baylor Lord recommended that as a replacement for the Neow benefit. Uh, and that's what he's done in his own, his own personal runs. Um, but a lot of the modifiers are just, like, make the game way too easy. Like, I want draft mode to be fun, but it's not. It's just, it's just you just roll the entire game. Um, and like almost all the modifiers are like that where it's like hoarder it seems like it might make the game more difficult but really it makes the game way easier um, yeah maybe maybe daily modifiers is fun um, definitely I, ha I have to do Ascension 20 because like from a from a inside baseball perspective um, people don't come if you don't have Ascension 20 in your stream title, people want to watch specifically Ascension 20. Um, that's something I've found out. Um, so doing Ascension 20 is definitely happening. Um, I guess I should have just asked, right? <laughs> then, like, what do people want to do? Uh, I should like I should like run polls and stuff, but um, I have not gotten around to actually doing that. Okay. Anyway, so this card pick, uh, I think. I'm not sure if we need Worship. Um, worship is a way of scaling up our damage for Act 4. Um, I guess Worship on a big Windmill Strike is maybe enough damage to kill the heart. So if we want a damage cap with just Windmill Strike and Worship, um, we need to do approximately a third of... 200 damage, so we need Windmill Strike to be hitting for like 70. That's retaining for a long time. We'd need a little bit more than that. Um, Ragnarok's a little closer. If we get up to like, like three strength or something, and we upgrade Ragnarok, then it's nine times six, and nine times six is uh, 54. 54 times three is 162, so that's pretty close to a damage cap. And it seems well within reach. Um, I don't hate that. Um, it is only after we have played Worship twice, so we need to have like a really strong block plan. But we kind of do have a strong block plan with three protects and a kunai. 
Um, so I think I'm going to grab the Worship. We need to have a plan for upgrading it. Maybe we upgrade it here. It is not times five, it's times three. Um, you can get times five if you have Divinity and people are vulnerable. Um, although, technically, that's uh, times 4.5. Feels like time to stop. Alright, let's grab the worship. And we're skipping this. Okay. The parasite of his friendly fungi beast. Uh, this turn is quite bad. We could scrawl and look for a protect. Uh, you must have just always misunderstood it because it's always been, been this way. Um, if we play Scrawl Protect, we block out this turn, but we fail to establish Establishment. Um, unless we draw Deus Ex Machina. There's a reasonable chance we get Deus Ex Machina. Let's give it a shot. Nope, no Deus Ex Machina and no Protect. Uh, very surprising outcome. Um, also, we wouldn't have blocked out. I keep thinking my Protects are upgraded, but they're not. Um, they're just regular protects. Uh, I think I'm gonna drink the regen pot just because this this fight could give us a um, could give us another potion, so I want to be ready for that. Um, and because it's probably long enough for the regen pot to pay off, and we're taking damage here, so there's gonna be room for it to pay off. Uh, so let's drink that, and I think we're playing two defense and skipping establishment. Um, shockingly, even though we have a 10 card hand, there's only one card that decosts here. Um, so we're not missing a ton of establishment value. Oof, this is a rough one. Picking seven. But the real damage is the frail. Frail is really, really important and bad. Uh, all right. Protect and flying sleeves. Need to get that flying sleeves out of hand while we don't have establishment. All right, finally we got the Deus Ex Machina and a couple of the protects. Yeah, that avocado is really biting us in the face. I don't like it. We get double protect. I guess they're not decosting, so it doesn't cost us too too much. I think I just like protect flying sleeves. Ugh. We bottom carded worship too. Uh, although worship's not currently any good because it doesn't have retain. So maybe we have to rest at this uh, campsite. Because we have to fight two elites after that. Uh, that's true. If you drink two regen pots, you get ten regen. It's like getting a Sacred Bark regen pot. Uh, I believe. I don't know if I've ever actually drank two regen pots, but it should stack. Um, I mean, clearly it stacks, right? Because you have basically two copies of regen right now. Um... Our Frail has worn off, so we can block a little bit more effectively. I think this turn should probably Protect Strike the Fungi Beast. That is going to Vulnerable me. Um, so he's going to hit us for 20. We'll take 8. I guess we can Miracle out up and Defend as well. Stacks it means multiple regen pots are crazy good because of how they work. Yeah, so, um, so like, the uh, the existing behavior with um, with sacred bark is nuts. So like, when you drink a sacred bark regen pot, you do get 10, 10 stacks of uh, regen for sure, and it heals so much. It's crazy. Um, can you imagine drinking two sacred bark regen pots and healing for twenty every turn? It's so stupid. <laughs> I love it. Um, I think we're just continuing to try and stay alive here. Protect the fend. 
lasts at our vulnerable. Hopefully re we redraw establishment next turn. Nope, establishment is at the bottom from here. Um, yeah. Yeah, that math is pretty easy because it's uh, 10 plus one times five. Let's take the opposite sides of the spectrum and by the, uh, the number of sums that would exist of that thing. Um, hmm. I guess Vigilance, Empty Fist, Protect is a thing we could do. I mean, uh, the best pots are, um, are Ghost in a Jar and Fruit Juice, okay? Um, it seems like there's not too much room for discussion there. I'll go ahead and uh, coin out a uh, Flying Sleeves just to get past his armor. Okay, we finally got the establishment. Uh, but now we don't have any block. We might actually have lethal here. Windmill Strike has been stacking for a while. Um, I think we do have lethal. So 9 plus 70, 79. Um, yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, second Worship. Uh, protect plus. Jeez. Um, wow, second Ragnarok too? Holy crap. This deck wants to be consistent. So I think we're taking either second Ragnarok or second Worship. I don't know if we want both. Actually, don't we want both? Isn't that exactly what you want? To like be able to consistently enter Divinity and consistently Ragnarok in Divinity? Um, we're skipping two Protects, but we already have three Protects, so that can't be too big of a deal. Uh, the Worship does need an upgrade. But, okay. Alright, I guess that's the deck now. Um, screw you, Kunai. <laughs> um, we want to upgrade Worships really aggressively, because we have the establishment. Alright, Book of Stabbing. Uh, establishment Defend is happening, and then I guess Simmering Fury? Uh, it's a little scary. We need to draw those cards, so I don't think we can afford to be too afraid. If we don't get it, <laughs> 210 from <laughs> two Gen Pots and a Sacred Rig. I love it. So you'd go up to 20? Wait, yeah, it is 210, you're right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we'll draw seven cards and then, and then Chaos if we don't find an exit. We did not find an exit. Actually, we kind of did. No, I guess we can't play both worships. Um, but if we could, that would be an exit. Can we just kill him? It's 50 damage, not even close. Um, triangular number formula. Nancy Tank, I don't think I've seen anyone else reference that formula since I was a mathlete in high school. <laughs> Just in case anybody thought I was cool. No, no. <laughs> that's, that's not the case. I'm going to need to correct you there. Uh, we don't have an exit, so we're going to play the Desilled Chaos and hope. Um, if the exit is Empty Fist, um, that doesn't really matter to us. I'm actually pretty low chance of it here. We have Vigilance and Empty Fist are our only two outs in... 13 cards. Perfect for when you're playing Ironclad, have strawberry, mango, pear, mango. Took the donut from the Aqua of that. I played Feed 30 on odd times, and they're currently on 1 HP. What'd you miss? I don't know. I don't know how long you were gone. Um, currently, the deck has pivoted to be an establishment uh, worship deck. So we have two copies of Worship and two copies of Ragnarok. And we're just trying to blow people up with that. Um, eventually. Currently, we're trying to survive Book of Seven. In order to do that, we need to exit Wrath Mode, 
in order to do that, we need to play Distilled Gas. Please. Yay! Okay, we did. Um. Ah, uh, math. Okay, let's play uh, Consecrate while we're in Wrath Mode. Should have done that before we played the Distilled Chaos. I wasn't really thinking about Scrawl. I missed that a little bit. Um, yeah, so the reason people are talking about the triangular number formula is because of regen pot. We drank a regen pot earlier, and somebody asked how they stack, and what happens if you drink two of them while you have sacred bark, and um, at that point, the correct thing is to, uh, is to start doing math. <laughs> um... Oh, I see why Mint Chocolate Mint Chocolate said 420 divided by 2. Yeah. That's, um... That's true, Mint Chocolate. Uh, did we ever find Lethal here? We got, we've still got Ragnarok, still 50 damage, still not lethal. So I think we're just going to protect Vigilance here. Okay. Worship decosts, getting us closer to divinity mode. Uh, we're going to need to protect again. Um, I guess protect strike worship is pretty reasonable here. We kind of want to play the worship so that if we so that we can redraw it next turn, and then go into divinity mode and whack him. We do take 12. Come on, worship. Um, we can empty fist, vigilance, protect. Um, yeah, they're talking about total health. <laughs> Yeah, why doesn't Awaken One's regen decrease? That's so strange. I guess he has a different regen ability with the same icon. There is a little bit of icon sharing already, even for player things, because the debuff for um, temporary strength and temporary dex is is a it's a little flexi fist, um, and it's the same for both, and it can be kind of, kind of confusing if you have both at the same time. Not that confusing, but like a little bit. Uh, okay. So let's play Empty Fist to get some energy, and I guess Protect Vigilance to block. Um, how about this? We play two Flying Sleeves to get a Dex, and then we Vigilance Protect. Currently this blocks for 20, that would make it block for 22. He's hitting us for 35. It's a bit more than that. Do Orb Walkers have different icons for their rituals? You mean different than cultist? I I think they do. Oh, I see. Why do they? Well, because fictionally it's different. Orb walkers have are charging up, whereas the cultists are chanting, right? Um, I really wish I had lethal. That would be nice. Twenty-five, forty. 56, nope. Yeah, 210 is correct. Or 420 divided by 2, if you want to think about it that way. Um, oops, I was supposed to play the two flying sleeves first. I guess it only cost me one health to do it. Um, dang. We're getting beat up. Uh, we'll get lethal next turn, but at what cost? Eternal Feather Mango, wow. <laughs> okay. They want me to, uh, they want me to come back. They're like, hey, you need some health. Try this. Uh, tranquility could help. We we end up getting stuck in wrath mode on occasion. Um, that ends up feeling kind of scary. 
Book of Seven could have easily killed us. Um, the real question is how are we surviving this fight with 25 health? Particularly if it is uh, slavers. I don't think any of these cards are particularly helpful. And we need Perrin Waffle now. That's right, we get all the all the food. Uh, strawberry mango. Yeah, we have quite a quite a bit of max HP here. 94. Pretty rare to get a, a non-ironclad to 100. I don't know if I've ever had a watcher above 100. We're skipping this. I don't think these are impactful enough. Maybe this question mark heals us? Hey, look at that. Uh, is there a card that we need? I think there's not. We're getting tons of cards because we have a uh, prayer wheel. Um, so we sleep. Tomorrow versus Sapphire Key. Tomorrow we do have um, uh, Mantra. So if Tomorrow ticks five times, it's done. It's been reasonably helpful. I think actually helping us go into Divinity on specifically turn 5 is, is fairly useful. Um, there is a really unfortunate interaction with Damaru and a card in our deck, um, which is, um, what is that? Simmering Fury. So Simmering Fury says at the start of your turn, enter Wrath and draw two cards. And Damaru says at the start of your turn, gain one Mantra. So there's a couple of different sources that say at the start of your turn, gain one Mantra. One of them is Damaru. The other one is Divinity, I think. Um, the, the power that has the little floating candle. Um, both of them give you mantra at the beginning of your turn. But they function differently. Um, so the, the um, Divinity, if, if Divinity puts you into, it, it, sorry, if, um, I have to look up the name of the card, sorry. Um, watch your cards. Mantra. Um, devotion. If devotion puts you into divinity, and um, and simmering free puts you into wrath at the same time, you end up in divinity. You go into wrath for a second, and then you go into divinity. So it still triggers rushdown, uh, but you end up in divinity, which is what you want, obviously. But if Damaru and rushdown put you into divinity and wrath at the same time, for some reason. Rushdown wins, or Simmering Fury wins, so you end up in Wrath, which is sad. Um, you still get the extra energy from transitioning into Divinity, so you go to Divinity for a second and then into um, Wrath. So you, you still draw the cards from Rushdown, you still get the energy from Divinity mode, but you only do double damage and enemies will do double damage to you. Uh, which is a pretty big drawback. Um, so Dabaru is great, I think. Um, it's actually pretty likely that we would go into Divinity on turn five. Um, if assuming we're playing uh, establishment on one and one of the two worships before um, turn five, um, but that interaction is actually fairly significant and uh, pretty negative. Um, there's there, unfortunately there's no consistent um, uh, statement like that. Uh, Machi tank. Some relics are prioritized before cards. Some aren't. It's kind of a mess. Um, there's there's no uh, there's no rhyme or reason to it, but Demaru specifically happens uh, before um, specifically Simmering Fury. So um, if you have both Demaru and Devotion, it um, it actually matters which one puts you into de into Devotion. So if you're on if you're on seven. Um, worship, then you'll end up in Divinity. If you're on 9 Worship, you'll end up in Wrath. Um, fun. <laughs> um, uh, so I think we'll probably take tomorrow. Um, just because, like, why would we take Sapphire Key? I mean, Sapphire Key makes Curse Key better, uh, and we could use the energy, but tomorrow's the pick here. Uh, what does Damaru do? It gives you one mantra per turn, and mantra is the thing that puts you into divinity. Um, 
Uh, I think this turn is establishment worship. <laughs> Seems good. I guess we could try and Ragnarok the Sneaky Gremlin to death. I don't hate that either. He'd have to get hit by three of them, though, which is pretty unlikely. And we'd be skipping Establishment, which is increasingly critical in the deck. All right, 33, 48 damage coming in. Um... Establish the worship or worship the establishment? Great question. I don't know. Um, yeah, if, if so, this is like a theocracy deck. We're we're taking worship and establishment because we're like we're the ruling government, but also we're like highly religious. It's a theocracy deck. I'm gonna have to remember that for the end of the stream when I tell myself what the title of the YouTube video is. This is a. Uh, Theocracy Watcher. Um, okay, so this is... Um, what is it? 18 damage. I want to kill the Sneaky Gremlin, but I think it costs too much. I don't think we can, just, we can pay for that. Um, they're hitting us for 48, so we need to block for 6 to survive. Or, sorry, 5. Monarchy... I think you've misspelled monarchy. There's a Y in there somewhere. Some, somewhere at the end. <laughs> um, I think we probably want to save our flying sleeves for Proc and Kunai. So I think we like protect, defend Simmering Fury here, maybe. We could double protect as well, but Simmering Fury is nice. Yeah, what do, what if we, if we picked blasphemy in this deck? What does it mean, fictionally? I guess we're like we're the okay. So you know like um, okay, fascists, right? They like to do government that's like sort of based in religion, or I guess like authoritarians. They like to do like couch their authority in religion, but then they often do things in the name of that religion that the religion itself would detest, like um, the Crusades and stuff. Um, so I guess that's what blasphemy is. It's like us going out, being the enforcer for this, um, this, uh, which we call it religion, um, bureaucracy, but then also like blaspheming and we can get away with it as long as we kill all the witnesses, <laughs> um, before we get found out. Um... So Protect, Protect blocks for more, but Protect, Defend, Simmering Fury puts me into Wrath mode and basically guarantees that I kill these Gremlins next turn. Also, Gremlin Leader can't be attacking next turn, so that's nice. We do have a Fire after this, and a lot of max HP, and an Eternal Feather, and 25 cards in deck. So the Eternal Feather is going to proc for uh, 15 health, and then we're going to heal for like almost 30 by resting. So I think the approach here is to give up some health to make sure we win the fight. Okay. Um, uh, rag, consecrate, almost feels to here, Emma. Um, I don't think that's true. Um, let me look him up really quick, but I don't, I don't think that's how he works. He won't summon if you have two people. Um, when there's two or three other enemies, you'll have 66% chance of using courage. Yeah. Um. But actually, he he has an even lower percent chance of doing stab when either when there are zero other enemies. Most of the time, he does rally if you kill them all. So killing them all is a good way to make him keep 
not stabbing. That's what we want. Um, uh, Alright, so Consecrate is happening. Um, I guess we'll let Ragnarok kill the Sneaky Gremlin. And we need to play at least one of these to get a Kunai proc. Um, 16 plus 30 is almost lethal. Um, but we will wait until next turn. Next turn we're probably going to be able to enter Divinity and kill him. Um, there's six cards here. I think we can guarantee Scrawl draws six. Also, this is just lethal now. Okay. Cool. A bird-faced urn and a toxic egg. Wait, why did we... Oh, yeah, Black Star. Okay. I was like, why did we get two relics? Um, Indignation, Crescendo, and Bowling Bash. I think all of these are a no. Indignation does help multiply damage. Um, so we might be able to Indignation while we're in Wrath mode, uh, get people vulnerable, and then enter Divinity and multiply our damage times 4.5, which is good. Um, but it's a little bit of a... Like, do we need to do that? Don't, don't we just go into Divinity and then hit people hard enough already? Uh, we don't really need a Wrath Enter in the deck. Alright, back up to 56. Seems good. So we're offered Bites. Uh, Costs us a little bit of max HP. We've got plenty of max HP. I think the main problem with Bites is it would add three cards to the deck. Bites are an excellent complement to Kunai, in my opinion, because Kunai wants you to play attacks, and Bites are way better than Strikes, so you feel good about playing the playing the Bites, um, and then you get decks. And because um, getting Kunai rolling can take some time, um, so you end up spending a lot spending a lot of time in hallway fights, um, and spending a lot of time in hallway fights means you're going to take damage. Um, so Kunai takes decks sometimes end up bleeding their health out slowly. Um, but if you have bites, then instead of bleeding out slowly, you actually build up to fall in, in several important fights. Um, particularly like Act 3 fights like Orblings um, are something that you can easily get to full health in. Um, Act 2 you can uh, fight like uh, Centurion Mystic to full health, because Mystic heals herself. Uh, so I think we are going to take bites. I wish this was Toxic Egg was a... Um, what's the attack egg? Molten Egg um, for the bites. That would be sick, but... Um, I guess in general I'm happier with the Toxic Egg, so maybe maybe this is fine. Uh, getting three extra cards is a bit of a concern, going up to 28 cards. Uh, but I don't, I don't think it's too bad. We'll do it. Mm, bites... All right, it's Book of Stabbing again. He's just trying to hang out. Uh, we will not get apparitions later. Um, we'd have to get apparitions on this floor specifically. It's an Act 2 event, so it's pretty unlikely that we get apparitions. Um, if we don't play either Protect, we take 4 damage. But if we don't play either Protect, then we decost them both. That seems good. So I think we should take the damage. I kind of forgot that we have some marginal healing with Birdface Urn, so maybe we didn't need the bites to heal. It's true, we could get at get a um, get apparitions. It is possible. Um, bite double protect seems okay here. I'm not super enthusiastic about it. Losing both protects seems sort of, mm, I guess. Um, we can't go into Divinity, but we could play Worship. Um, double Bite Flying Sleeves gives us a Dex. Leaves us with an energy left over for Worship, I guess. Uh, we take 28 damage. 
Yikes. Alright, I was hoping for that other um, worship. Worship or scrawl would have done. I've gotten this there, but didn't get it. Oh, we might have lethal anyway. 25 plus 15, nope, 40, 48. Um, you say there's no point in worshipping this turn, but if we had drawn the other worship, um, I guess it, the only reason was hand size, uh, which is not super compelling. Um, but what else were we going to do? Probably playing uh, Vigilance Defend this turn. And I'll go ahead and play the three attacks to get extra block. So we end up blocking for 17. And then we go into Divinity next turn, hopefully drawing the Ragnarok. And have all the energy available next turn. Exiting Calm, entering Divinity. Puzzle old coin. We've got a lot of money now. Uh, liquid Memories is great with uh, worship. We could just like worship Liquid Memories, worship. Um, I think Empty Mind is a no. We have too much um, divinity now. Prey is actually quite a bit better than last time we saw it. Last time we saw it, Prey was like worship minus, but this time with the Tamaru, Prey could be like a turn two. Um, it could be a turn to uh, Divinity Enter, um, which is pretty neat. I'm not too wild about the insight. Um, that's right. That book is a is an illegal artifact. It's contraband. Gotta shut it down. I don't know if I've ever taken a prey. I feel like I've only ever had Prey involuntarily put into my deck. And I've been like, yuck. I don't like this. Uh, I think the deck needs a lot more block. I'm not sure how we fell so far behind on block, given that we took three protects. Um, but Prey is not block. Maybe we just need, like, mon like uh, prostrates. I would take a prostrate, I think, at this point. But I don't think I'll take a Prey even though it's upgraded. Empty Mind, similarly, we don't want to be exiting um, Divinity. Although drawing three cards, if, we, like, if we're in Wrath or something, we could Empty Mind, draw three cards, get a bunch of zero cost stuff, enter Divinity, blow people up. Yeah, exactly, Prostrate's kind of insane here. Um, maybe Empty Mind is good. I wish that I just had like a wheel kick. Like where's my wheel kick? I wish Empty Mind blocked. Um, I think the rush down was a mistake. Empty Mind or skip. Going up against Hyper Beam Guy, not too afraid of Hyper Beam Guy. Um, should be okay, although Ragnarok uh, does have a tendency to hit, hit the Orblings and be taken by the Orblings. That's right, Empty Minds uh, encourage obedience. Empty mind, but there's no room for Tiananmen Square. What is my favorite and least favorite empty card? Well, Empty empty Fist is clearly the best one. Uh, empty Fist is insane. Um, empty Fist is almost always a take in Act 1, certainly in early Act 1. It's like one of the highest damage commons in the game. 
Um, and I think Empty Mind is probably the middle. Empty Bodies is the... Or no, I think Empty Mind is probably last. Eh, I don't know. They're kind of fighting over last. I guess Empty Bodies last and Empty Mind is the middle. Because Empty... Card draw is so good. Um... Alright, I will take Empty Mind. Hmm... I think all of my gold seems wrong, but these guys are gonna kill me. I've got a Liquid Memories, maybe we can survive it. We could do worship, um, liquid memories worship. Bite. Wait, what's the point of that? <laughs> why, why would we do that? Um, maybe we'll do that when we uh, when we can play Ragnarok. I think for now it's establishment worship. Take two. Alright. Um, there are zero copies of Ragnarok in this hand. Which is, like, my least favorite number of copies of Ragnarok. We have a Consecrate, though, so I think we probably want to go... Uh, we can Vigilance Empty Body. Um which costs one energy to draw three cards. And then we could find the other, um, the, both the Ragnaroks and the Worship. Or just the Ragnaroks and then we use Liquid Memories to get there. Um, okay. We found the Worship. Um, but no dice on the Ragnaroks. Uh, we could Simmering Fury and try and block. So what does that look like? It'd be like Simmering Fury, double protect. Blocks for 16, we block for 20 total. 12, 24, 34. So we take 14, go to 2. Seems low. Um, I feel like when you go into Divinity, it should purge your debuffs. <laughs> um. Um. There's no way to draw cards here. So we could probably kill one of them with like Consecrate, Bite, Empty Fist. If we go into Divinity now. Um, if we go into Divinity now, we go to two mantra, and then we go to three at the beginning of the turn, so we couldn't get back into it next turn. Uh, I guess we got protect, protect, defend. Oh, defend only blocks for one, so we bite instead. Bite is more health. Wait, really? If we worship, consecrate, liquid memories to consecrate? It seems like unconscionably bad <laughs> to liquid memories to consecrate. I don't know if I can stomach it, but I guess it is 30 AoE damage. Um, and then we can, like, bite Empty Fist, too. So we'd kill Romeo point team. Get hit for... Actually, would we have enough for protect two? Because this costs two, and then we'd gain a bunch. Yeah, so we'd actually block out there. I guess it loses liquid memories and wins the fight, which is kind of what I was hoping for. Huh. Okay, well, I guess that's a, that's a line. I don't know if I've ever liquid memories to concentrate, but... Uh, 
Um, I guess we can block out either one. So I'll put there. Well, it felt gross, but it worked well. Oh, bite. Uh, just talk to the hand. Seems like a card that's usually good. We have Ragnarox and uh, Flying. Uh, sorry, um, Flying Sleeves. It's true, yeah. The big play there was the. Uh, um, um, what was the Consecrate? I feel like sometimes playing on streams makes me better because chat is there to, to catch stuff that I don't catch, but sometimes playing on stream makes me worse. I definitely like miss stuff that I wouldn't miss otherwise. If I weren't like just talking to people. <laughs> um, I think Talk of the Hand is almost certainly a pick. Talk of the Hand is like almost never bad and we have like lots of multi attacks. Um, can we actually get rid of debuffs? Or to get rid of artifact charges rather? Uh, we have absolutely nothing that removes artifact charges. Um, but I think that's usually okay. The only, like, it sucks in the, um, the Spire Elite fight, but that's okay. Things, things can just be bad sometimes. It doesn't have to always be great. Um, I was talking about needing more block. Both Talk of the Hand and Third Eye do that. Third Eye is pretty nice. I definitely find myself looking for stuff, um, where I'm like, I play Rush Down and I hope to draw the Worship. Um... Um, hmm. Talk to the hands also an attack, helps me trigger Kunai. I really do feel like that that third eye is pretty necessary though. Yeah, I, I feel like the talk to the hand is, is a little bit of a stretch for the for the theme. Uh, third eye has got an obvious police state vibe to it. Third eye is always watching you. Um, Third Eye is just an excellent card all around. It's hard not to like that. Third Eye also helps mitigate um, Act 4 status shenanigans to some extent. Helps us pay off the kunai. What's our attack ratio look like nowadays? We got one, two, three, um, oops, four, five, six, seven, uh, twelve, thirteen. So it'd be our 14th attack if we took it, and we're currently 13 out of 29, so we're almost up to half. Um, I think we're probably good on attacks. So if we're taking Talk to the Hand just for an attack, it's probably wrong. So maybe we do take Third Eye. Yeah, let's take Third Eye. We've got a lot of stuff that isn't block or attack, like Scrawl and Worship and Rush Down. Um, and if half the deck is attack, then we probably don't have enough block, so let's take the card that actually does block. 36. Um, seems like we should probably rest. Maybe we can get away with it. If we can get away with it, it's almost certainly the worship that gets upgraded. Um, after worship, it's like Ragnarok and Eruption. Do I prefer Talk to the Hand or Rage? Is that a, is that a serious question? Uh, talk to the Hand is one of the best cards in the game, and Rage is not good. <laughs> so, I think you can intuit my opinion of the two. Also, they're for different classes, so it's hard to compare them with a common context. Um, but I don't really need a context to compare cards that are so different. Although they would work well together, uh, I will give them that. I'll give Rage that. Um... Oh, wait, you, uh, sorry, I, I had the wrong card. When you said Rage, I thought you meant Anger. Um, uh, yeah, I do. I definitely prefer Talk of the Hand um, over Rage. The primary reason beca being, um, like, the problem with Rage is you have to spend one of the cards in your hand to set up your Rage turn. Um, but then that means that, there's a car you're, you, that you're not attacking with one of your cards. <clears throat> and then you want to use all your cards to be attacked so that you can block. 
But um, but talk to the hand doesn't have that problem because you talk to the hand once and then it lasts for the rest of the fight. Um, so talk to the hand is like scaling, whereas rage is um, is very sensitive to the, the current hand. So rage, like you you can generally block for like six with it. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, I think I will take the worship upgrade. We have a fairy in a bottle. Maybe the fairy in a bottle will block a hyper beam. That's fine. Alright, obviously so I can establish it on turn one. Third act plus find our mantra stuff. Um, he is attacking next turn, so we do want some block ideally. So I think we're going to skip the bites and the scroll until second shuffle. And I think I'm going to skip rush down too. Just want the worship. Rage could really use a buff. That's uh, that is a good point. I think making it a skill that exhausts and gives a buff is probably not correct. There's almost no other cards that do that. In fact, are there any cards that are skills that exhaust and give a buff? There's the bomb, which is a skill that gives a buff. Um, I should say that exhausting give a permanent buff. Um, Alchemize kind of feels like that. Um, but a skill that exhausts and gives a buff is basically just another name for a power. So if you're gonna make one of those, you should probably just make it a power. Um, okay, so we need to block this turn. Seems like Vigilance Protect is probably happening. I guess we could Protect and take four to trigger Centennial Puzzle. Um, other things we could do, Vigilance Empty Mind Protect. It's kind of fun. I think I like Vigilance Empty Mind Protect. Blocks all the way out. Draws a bunch of cards that we can retain for fun and prop up. Or, you know, no retain cards. That works, too. Uh, we're retaining five cards, which is kind of a lot. Uh, ideally, we should be retaining four cards, because one of the cards in the deck is Deus Ex Machina. Uh, wait. Oh, I guess I already drew Deus Ex Machina. Never mind. Five cards is fine. Um, that's an interesting idea. I mean, why not just make it exhaust and give it debuff? That's exactly what... Uh, talk of the hand does, and that's that seems fine. Although it is weird. Also, I don't have um, rage in front of me, but I believe rage is whenever you play an attack card, whereas uh, talk to the hand is whenever you damage the enemy, um, which is are pretty different for multi attacks. And uh, Ironclad definitely has some multi attacks. Um, I think we're gonna. Uh, no, I guess I'll retain all five. Seems fine. Oof, there goes a Ragnarok. Oh, he got a worship. Okay, so we need to kill that guy, I guess. Uh, we're gonna get by on, on one worship, I guess. Hmm. Which one do I guess? I guess both. Um. Seems like we should probably get a uh, Kunai proc this turn. Um, entering Wrath seems fine as long as we're killing at least one of the two orbs. So we like Wrath, Consecrate, Flying Sleeves. Can we get two decks this turn? One, two, three attacks, and then three, four, five. We need uh, four energy, that's fine. Okay, so how do we do 60 damage? Um, this one does 40. So 40 plus... 10 plus 14 looks like the most efficient way to do it. That wastes 4. Um, okay. Uh, 
Uh, empty fist is clutch. I need that. Uh, here we're, we're, we're potentially run into the Simmering Fury at, uh, at nine bug. If we played Worship to try and set it up for next turn, and then uh, also played Simmering Fury, we would end up in Wrath mode. Um, although I guess we can Empty Fist on the Orb and then play both Worships to go into Divinity now? Uh, wait, why would I want to go into Divinity now? I don't even know any, any attacks. Um, that seems wrong. I guess we're just skipping Simmering Fury then. So it's Empty Fist, Protect, Defend. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. Um, I guess I won't... Huh. I want to play Worship so that it gets shuffled, but I don't want to play Worship because I don't want to go into uh, Divinity without knowing that I'm going to draw attacks. Hmm. I'll just trust the deck. Hopefully we'll draw some attacks. Oh right, I forgot our puzzle. This is the first time in the run that it's triggered, so... Uh, we can we can go into Divinity again next turn, so how about that? Um, Alright, it looks like we're just biting him really hard. We have uh, Rush Down Simmering Fury to draw nine cards next turn, which overdraws us. Um, and we'll play this Worship, because it's our decosted, and we'll play that one next turn. Um, bidding Steel and getting life out of it. Oh, Biting Steel, yeah, yeah, because the Automatons. Metal dude. Okay, this is the hyperbeam turn. Definitely want to get out of wrath. Um, we could empty mind. We're probably gonna like vigilance empty mind at some point this turn, but I think we're gonna go into divinity first. And, uh, do some damage. All right, now we've gotten our dex proc. How are we blocking? Uh, Vigilance, Empty Mind, does some stuff. It's a little bit sad to draw cards on a Divinity turn while we're not in Divinity anymore. Uh, but that is what it is. And then we can uh, Protect Defend. So that ends up blocking for 25 plus 12 is 37. Still take a little bit of damage from uh, uh, the, whatchamacallit, the thingamajig. I guess we could Sprawl here and look for Lethal. That seems wrong. Hold Windmill Strike for the next Divinity turn. Which is probably soon. Uh, we have Rush Down up, so Eruption draws a couple cards. Um, we can just Eruption Empty Fist, I guess. I guess I can Windmill Strike and then Empty Fist to get 50 damage and shuffle the Windmill Strike back. Dex in the process, just in case. Uh, Vigilance Empty Mind seems good. Worship does not put us into Divinity. Um, yeah, we might not have needed Exit Wrath. I just didn't want, like, this fight's pretty well under control, so the worst possible outcome is that we fail to Exit Wrath and then die to. 80 damage. Um, um, so I just wanted to make sure that wasn't happening. Uh, 
Um, we've blocked out. I think the next objective is to fight some health back. Um, yeah, I think we're Uh, we have lethal, I'm pretty sure. Do we ever just bite him for fun? Um, we can we can guarantee lethal next turn too. We have windmill strike divinity. I think we can afford to draw some bites. Q getting killed by stuff. Setting up sundial also an option. Uh, bites are the only things we care about, so let's just look for bites. Um, we have, uh, Rushdown coming, so I think we're gonna just play the Protects to get them out of the hand. I guess we should play Flying Sleeves too, because it draws me an extra card that could be a bite. But we can't play the Worship or else we end up in, uh... Wrath mode. Actually, is Wrath mode enough? Yeah, it's gonna be, because this is gonna go up to 30 damage, so that's doing 60 damage. I don't know how much he blocks for, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't survive 60 damage. So I will draw my 9 cards. Um, see? <laughs> you end up in Wrath mode if you do it that way. We, we could just go back in Divinity, go to Divinity twice a turn. That's fun. Uh, I think I will, actually. Because we've only got these two bite or these three bites and we could look for another one with double worship scrawl just being super rude to bronze automaton here you know bronze automaton i don't care about your feelings i like the taste of your metal all right um, second Deus Ex Machina, second chance at Blizzard, at Blasphemy, Blizzard, um, or a Master Reality, or Skip. Um, skip seems pretty reasonable. Um, Deus Ex Machina Plus is almost worse than Deus Ex Machina, because it really screws up your hand size. Um, and we retain so many cards that, like, retaining three cards instead of four is actually a pretty big deal. Um, I think I wouldn't pick Dead Branch. Um, I think I would I would skip Dead Branch if it was offered. Um, the deck doesn't need it and it's just it's got some got some downsides. Um, None of these help me block. Blasphemy kind of helps block in that it um, ends fights sooner. I just realized we're going into Act 3 with 579 gold and a frigging membership card. <laughs> I, maybe, maybe I should have gone to this shop. Um, I sort of forgot that I had 1,000 gold. I was like, this is going to be a big shop. No, this is going to be a huge shop. Um Totally forgot about the membership card. Uh, I think Master Reality is a skip. I think Deus Ex Machina is a skip. I think it's either Blasphemy or Skip. And I think it's Skip, to be honest. Um, our, it, Blasphemy Plus has Retain, and Retain cards, uh, we have a limited number of them, and you can't play Blasphemy in a bunch of fights. Um, so I think we're skipping. All right. Um, Snekawai, Coffee Dripper, and Cursed Key. I think we're probably taking Coffee Dripper here is my first instinct here. Uh, these are all pretty good. Um, Cursed Key has a usually, usually less relevant downside than Coffee Dripper. Um, preventing you from resting is a pretty big deal. Giving you a curse once in the run, usually not too big of a deal. Uh, Cursed Key can come up more than once. Um, we could get a chest in Act 3. But we don't have um, the relic that gives you double chests or anything. Or the relic that, gu that guarantees question marks turn into chests. Um, we did get access to Sneko. I think this is not a Sneko run. Um, problem with Sneko is... Um, 
with establishment and all the retained cards, we already draw a lot. Um, and we don't want our zero cost cards to have their cost randomized. Because um, like after we after we decost those um, warships, we're like we're happy to just see them and play them the, the next time. Um, we don't want their cost getting re-randomized when we redraw them. So I think Sneko Eye is probably worse than Skip here. Uh, we have a lot of retain for the Coffee Dripper. Um, Bird Face Earn and Bites um, does a lot. Also the, the Eternal Feather. Uh, I think we're only missing um, uh, Meal Ticket. I think Meal Ticket is the only other um, relic source of sustain. I guess Blood Vial too. Um, that's available for Watcher at least, because you can't get Burning Blood. Um, there's some other things that are like technically sources of sustain, like White Beast Statue, you can get regen pots. Toy Ornithopter, that's fair. But even Toy Ornithopter, it's like, it, you kind of have to, it's not guaranteed sustain, right? It's like you have to find and use a potion. That's not. I guess for Eternal Feather, you have to find a fire. But I guess anything that heals should be called sustain. Okay, all right, I'm wrong. <laughs> Toy Ornithopter sustain. Uh, okay, so what's the argument for Kursky? We might need to rest in Act 3. Uh, I think it's the big argument. Resting in Act 3 is not a great plan, because we need to recall um, in Act 3 as well. Also, um, our pathing is pretty constricted. We don't have the green key yet, so we have to fight a mega elite. And with cursed key, generally you want to put your your sort of mid-act chests right before a shop, so you can get a curse and then get rid of the curse. Um, and we're not going to be able to do that because we're going to have a we're going to need to path towards the mega elite wherever he is. Um, so I think it's going to be coffee dripper. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. I hope there's a shop on the Mega Elite path. Oh, good. Mega, Mega Elite is late, so we basically get whatever path we want. Wow, there's a four Elite path here. Um, but there's no shops on that path, so we're probably going here instead, taking a three Elite path. Still good. Basically trading this Elite for a shop. The fire is around um, We could look for a two shot path, but there isn't any. Um, the only shops in the watershed of this uh, of this Mega Elite are this one and that one, and you can't go to both, so... I think we're doing this path, probably. Because um, it gets an extra Elite compared to this path. Uh, actually, that's not true. They both get one before this fire. I'm gonna meet up. And this one has an extra fire. Um, it has more fights. It's got three fights in the shop versus three question marks. Two fights. Wait, what? This has only got one question mark and this has three. Oh, I guess we're trading one question mark for a fight and one question mark for a fire to go this way. Um, so an extra fight and an extra fire or two extra question marks. That's the choice. Uh, what are we looking for in the question marks? Uh, there could be a surprise shop. A surprise shop would be good. Um, there could be a relic. There could be a mind bloom. Uh, falling and winding halls are fine-ish. Um, what else could be happening? Library? No, we already saw library. That can't. Uh, can't see that again. It's like Upgrade Shrine and all kinds of weird stuff that's um, unlikely. I think I like the question marks more. Main, mainly just because Mind Bloom I might get an extra relic out of it. Uh, I guess there's a, there's Tesseract as well. Do we want Tesseract? What do we get out of Tesseract? We get powers out of Tesseract, which is a bird face earning value. That's super relevant though. Yeah, Portal of the Boss. Portal of the Boss is rare though. Single orb walker in his natural environment. We'll let him hit us for two, but we get net positive four health on the turn. We 
draw a bunch of cards. One of those cards is Scrawl. That's not very good. Um, okay. There are two skills that make a card cost zero. Forgot the name. The name is Madness. Um, yeah, and that's part of the Winding Halls event that I mentioned. Um, I'm not 100% sure Winding Halls is good. Probably is. Um, uh, okay, so we can like protect, defend, rush down, Simmering Fury. That uh, overdraws quite a bit because we're retaining two protects, a flying sleeve, and a warship. So we're retaining four cards, and we try to draw nine. We draw six. Um, so the rush down, I guess, is not very useful. I guess the rush down heals us for two. That's the primary use. Blocking for 17, taking four. Healing for two means net negative two health. Sure. We also have Rushdown established, so now we could like Empty Mind Eruption to draw more cards. Um, we're in Wrath mode, so Flying Sleeves is pretty decent here. I guess we can just go into Divinity. Two Worships. Probably only want to do that if we get Lethal. But we might have Lethal, so... Um, this is... Um, 12 times 2, so it's 24 damage. These are going to be 21 damage, so 24 plus 21 times 2, 21 times 2 is 42, plus 21 is 63, plus uh, 27 is lethal. Uh, can we play it all? Yes. The worships cost us net zero, because they cost three and give us three. Uh, any other reason to delay? We get two bites, we get a 64, it's pretty much full health. Let's do it. Okay. Next fight. Uh, Flurry's not bad. Helps us trigger Kunai. We change stances quite a bit, mostly into and out of Divinity and Wrath. Let's take a look at the other option. Ooh, wow. Uh, Wallop, wave of the hand. I guess Wreath of Flame is not a ooh wow pick, but Wallop and Wave of the Hand are, and Wreath of Flame is upgraded, so that's something. Actually, Wreath of Flame is not bad here. Uh, Wreath of Flame um, plus Ragnarok in Divinity is a lot of Wreath of Flame damage. In fact, Wreath of Flame is adding 24 damage per attack in Divinity mode, uh, and an upgraded Ragnarok attacks six times, so that's a net increase of... Um, 24 times 6, whatever the hell that is. It's like 150. 44, I guess. Um, so, like, Wreath of Flame, and then even if somehow Ragnarok did zero damage, just Ragnarok attacking six times would be almost a damage count. Uh, but yeah, I think Wallop is almost certainly the pick. Wallop is amazing in Divinity decks, uh, particularly Divinity decks that can go into Divinity, like, every turn. Um, helps us prop Kunai. Um, blocks out. We've had a lot of trouble blocking. Uh, Wave of the Hand is no joke, though. Wave of the Hand is a really good card. Uh, but we didn't pick the Talk to the Hand. Talk to the Hand and Wave of the Hand generally kind of go together. Um, so I think we're going to pick Wallop and stick with the Divinity plan here. Um, Seed Reality is also quite good. Um, it's deck scaling, which is rare, because uh, it's if you play both halves, you get your decks twice. It also has a Retain card, so we can... Um, we can get that to cost zero. Um, it's upgraded for, you know, for the Toxic Egg. Uh, the upgrade doesn't do much. It, only, it does four without the upgrade. I wish that, okay, here's a Slave Aspire UI note for all those Slave Aspire developers who are watching. Um, when you right click on an upgraded card, the view upgrade box should be checked and should still work. <laughs> so that you can uncheck it and see what it is unupgraded. I don't understand why this is not the way this works. Please fix. 
Um, that's like a QA sends that back as a bug, I think. If your QA department's good. Um, um, uh, it is similar to protect, but like, I might if this if it was protect plus, I might take it too. Uh, on Searing Blow, it just shows you the current upgraded version. If it's if your Searing Blow is, is plus zero, if it's if it's an unupgraded Searing Blow, it'll show you Searing Blow plus one when you click the button. But if it's upgraded, it has the same behavior as this, where it doesn't change. Or actually, maybe it does show you the next Searing Blow. Maybe you're right. In fact, I think you are right. It shows you what would happen if you upgraded this card. Yeah, I think you're right. It does show you the, the plus zero. Um... I don't think Flurry of Blows is probably correct. It does help us proc Kunai, but I think the cost of drawing a Flurry of Blows is too much to bear. Um, Cut Through Fate's kind of okay, but I think the Seed Reality is probably a good here. Uh, Smoke Bomb versus Flex Pop. Smoke, Smoke Bomb is per certainly more useful in an emergency, but do we have emergencies, or do we just win more fights if we keep Flex Pop? I don't know if we have emergencies. I think, honestly, for Searing Blow, they should just get rid of that box. <laughs> for, for Searing Blow specifically, just be like, eh, you can't. Because uh, it, it would need a whole UI, right? Like, like a slider, or like a two arrows or something. I guess if you really wanted to be fancy, you could just, um, you could have view upgrade have the little arrows on both sides of it, and you could just show all the different versions of uh, Searing Blow. That'd be pretty fun. Although that's adding new UI to the game, and that's, that's decently expensive. But it's, come on. It's one thing. It's it's not that expensive. Um, but honestly, if I was making the game, I don't know if I would do it because there's a lot of things that you could change about the game. You don't need to. Yeah, we're skipping the free gold. We now have the equivalent of 1,600 gold. Um, yikes! Please surprise shop. Uh, okay, I guess we'll use Empty Field, Empty Mind to draw here. Um, uh, yeah, the Black Star paid off pretty big. It got us the Toxic Egg and the Old Coin, I think, so far. Oh, wait. No, it got us one of these two as well. I think it got us the Mango. So yeah, it definitely paid off. <laughs> uh, we got um, three elites in Act um, Act Two. We're gonna do um, three in Act Three, and then we're gonna do one in Act Four. So it's seven total. Uh, but also, just like because we survived Act Two, it definitely paid off, right? Um, although we would have had the old coin earlier if we'd taken the um, the calling bell. So we could have taken some of this money to a shop instead of carrying around 1,600 gold, which is pretty silly. Uh, hmm. Hot Secret's always getting played. Um, do I play a Protect? Block for five? I think no. I think we just take some damage. Yeah, seriously, Courier would be amazing. If we could get a Courier here, I'd be so happy. Good God! Can you imagine courier and then just like just buy it, just fill up the relic bar and like go get two little arrows? I don't think I've ever had two arrows, but I have dreams. Courier would be incredible. Um, honestly, if ectoplasm was offered at the end of Act Two, I think I would have picked ectoplasm because we don't need this much money. This is just we're not going to be able to spend it. I never pick Echo Blossom. Uh, I hate that card. He's buffing, so he's a bigger threat. Let's punch him. Uh, this is a fight that we are definitely going to end at full health. We are not going to allow them to take any of our health. We're going to we're going to bite it back. Um, 
We could use three attacks, but we would enter Wrath if we did. I guess we could just enter Divinity if we wanted to. Enter Divinity it leaves us with three energy awkwardly. Um, I guess we just like play Bite and then like Third Eye Protect or something. We need to overcomplicate things. Uh, we're looking for bites mainly. Wallop is good. I'll go ahead and decost a flying so we don't need. Uh, do we play Flying Sleeves? Does that draw us an extra card? We got five cards. I guess we know we're not drawing the SX Mach because we just milled it, so we can hold five cards. Doesn't get us a good knife rock, so we'll hold it. Okay. Seems like we should probably go into Divinity and wallop somebody to death. Um, considering they're attacking for so much. Teach them a lesson. Uh, we'll go ahead and knock him down too. Just for fun. Oh, he's already dead. Um, stop, he's already dead. Oh, I was planning to Vigilance, but I guess I spent all my energy. Okay. Whatever. Uh, we're basically at full life. I would like to get one more bite in, but then we can just end the fight. Does this end? No. Uh, I guess I'll just establish rush down, because why not? Knock out. When does lethal? Oh, but I didn't want lethal out last turn. I wanted to get full health first. Every bit of health matters. Um, we're gonna draw a bunch of cards with Scrawl, go into Divinity, and Ragnarok everybody to death. That's the plan. That's perfectly efficient. Love doing that. Um, I'll play a Bite to draw an extra card, just to make sure we get it. We did not get it. Congrats. Um, we got both of our protects back. Hooray! Kill you again. And try and kill you this next turn. Please. Uh, worship goes into Divinity. Do we have enough damage? I think probably. I'm not gonna count it. That seems lame. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, another third eye plus. The last one was really good. I've been really impressed by that. Let's prostrate. Um, pays off. Kunai puts me into Divinity. It's really good with all the card draw. Kind of weak against Act 4 stuff. Uh, but I don't hate it. Pressure points here again. We never really got the meditates that we needed to support the pressure points, and we found like a totally different damage scaling plan for the heart, so we don't really care about pressure points anymore. Maybe prostrate to take? So if we're taking Prostrate, I don't think we need another third eye. I think we do Prostrate skip. Maybe we need a third eye more now that our deck is so big. Yeah, okay. Aha, we are getting an extra chest, so that Curse Key would have would have had a big cost here. It would cost us a Toy Ornithopter. I guess we're taking. We've got another chest coming up, so we're allowed to take that. Here's the Winding Halls event, where we can get the Madness if we want. I think we're just going to lose 3 max HP. Um, Retoxies Breakout Wow again? Such a chad? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> like, half those words didn't make sense to me. Retoxy? How to break wow? Is that a name of a person? Who's streaming and trying to break WoW? Okay. Alright. Tiny Nemesis. Doesn't seem so intimidating anymore. Uh, let's set up for next turn. Getting a Worship established seems good, so does Protect. We don't need Bites uh, or Flying Sleeves, particularly next turn. Guess I'll go and Calm. Um, 
seems like protect deceive reality safety is probably getting played. Deceive reality safety is blocking for 19, protect is blocking for 12. Gonna have a bit of a hill to climb here to get back to full health in this fight. Should be possible though. For bites. And he's got intangible, so if we only damage him while he's uh, intangible. Um, we can, whatever, get a bunch of health off of him before we end the fight. Uh, speaking of ending the fight, we have Ragnarok here. We could empty mine to look for a eruption, or I guess, no, Summary Fury doesn't do that. Um, sure. Uh, we got Rush Down Simmering Fury for a bunch of card draw later. Seems okay. Um, I do want, his health is a resource. I want to make sure that we can, um, um, I want to make sure that we can heal off of him if we can, but I also want to make sure that I can end the fight if I need to. So him being at like 50-ish is sort of where I'm, where I'm in my happy place. This time he one-shot other people without using any of his class abilities. Wow. Um, cool. I presume those other people were not as prepared as he was. <laughs> Uh, looks like we have to enter Divinity just to exit Wrath here, uh, which is fine. We're not taking 90, that's for sure. Uh, actually, we need Bites to get health back, so I'll leave those. Um, I guess Double Protect Scrawl for Defend Bite? Let's scroll first and see what we get. Ooh, yeah. Somehow, bro. Okay. Set up for next turn. We don't need burns, that's for sure. Consecrate and defend is pretty low impact, but I'll keep it just in case we need to block a multi attack. Um, this box for 26, which seems wise. It's sort of about the right spot here. Throw in a bite. Get some health back. Alright, bites are definitely happening. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and windmill strike flying sleeves. Get a dex proc just to make sure we can keep our health up. Prostrate sits up for emergency divinity next turn. Simmering Fury. Draws me some cards. Draw nine, and we can go into Divinity if we need. Uh, those look like we need two. Just sort of what we were expecting. He's intangible, so we can punch him all we want. Um, I guess I'll flying suits for a dex. Sort of disappointing that we have to play it while, uh, while it costs one, so we don't get to decost it. Uh, third eye is happening. We don't need those burns. Worship could get us back into Divinity next turn. Empty Mind draws cards. Bites are what we're looking for with card draw. Um, we're blocked out almost now. Hmm. No, I guess I'll play the safety just to block, I guess, five damage. Because we're trying to exit at full, so... If I draw more cards, can I go into Divinity ever? No. Uh, I need to draw a block, though. So let's draw that wall up. So wall protect blocks out this turn. Uh, we can't play wall protect. That's too much energy. Protect blocks for more than wall up. Uh, maybe we flex pot wall. I guess flex pot wastes healing um, 
because we're, we only have two to heal. We're good for five. So I guess this fight's dragging on a little bit. Because um, he's hitting us. I'll go ahead and throw the worship out there just so that we can um, uh, draw it on the reshuffle. Hitting us for ten. Five more bites. Um, crap. Alright, so we need like 30, 30 bites now. I don't know if we're getting there. Um, we could kill him. Um, I think our deck is getting too full of burns to live this dream where we go to full health at the end of the, end of the fight. Um, is it 31 more ways? Wait, 31 would is more than it would take to heal us to full. Doesn't seem right. It's only 11 bites. Wait, no, we need to heal for 40, so it's 20, 21 bites. Okay, so you're not that bad. Mismathed. Ooh, I like that word. That's a good one. I want an empty mind to draw cards, but if I empty mind, then we can't wallop bite him to death. Maybe we're using the flex pot um, this turn. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna empty mind. Ah, no, it's wrong, right? right I'm just take the lethal. He's gonna give us a potion now. Yeah, he did give us a potion. Strike any orc out there. Cool. Second copy of Rushdown seems like way too much Rushdown. Um, halt is dex scaling. Gives you two times dex, which is pretty neat. Um, hey, Timnos. Uh, I'm doing great. Thanks for coming by. Uh, Sands of Time is some damage. We are about to go to a shop with the equivalent of 1,900 gold. Because we have 800 gold and the membership perk. Or I guess 1,700 gold, sorry. Um, well over 1,000. Uh, I think Halt is not a take. Halt is exciting, but... We don't have enough card draw to support that kind of investment. Can, I wish I could just drink this now. I don't understand why you can't. It doesn't give you anything, but I, I want the five health from Wolf Toy Arns on me. I think a uh, deck spot is probably better. Just throw it away. All right, membership card, what do you got for me? Chemical Axe? We don't have any Axe Cost stuff, right? Yep. Okay, so that's useless. We've got marbles. That's almost certainly getting bought. Um, zero cost madness. I didn't consider that the madnesses were going to be upgrading when I uh, saw that event. Um, I own Binding of Isaac, but I've embarrassingly never played it. Despite... Uh, my, my name is Isaac, so... Um, probably want to remove a bite. Defends are pretty good in the deck. Uh, clearly I'm an unbound Isaac. I don't know what that means, but thank you. <laughs> Thought about that. Yeah, let's remove a bite. Um... Before we buy this whetstone. Okay. And this deck of marbles. And we could buy a speculative chemical axe, because why not? Um, okay. Um, what's next? The inner piece seems good. I think inner piece is probably good. Uh, it does exit divinity, which is a minor problem. Drawing four cards seems really powerful. Wait a minute. It only draws four cards if you're in Calm. 
we're not really in Calm very often. We sort of enter and then exit Divinity and Wrath. We don't go in Calm. Our only way of going into Calm is uh, Vigilance. So I think Inner Peace is probably a no. Unfortunately. Bit of a dud for the cards in this shop. Rushdown's a no, Wreath of Flames is a no, Bowling Bash is a no, Carve Reality is a no. Madness and Magnetism also knows. We'll throw away another potion and buy a regen pot, considering we're at 20 right now. We have a bunch more um, elites to go. I think we're winning. Hope we're winning. We can take a little bit of doing. But I'm not your son anymore. Guitar. Not since the incident. I'm creating beef between me and Guitar right now. We haven't spoken to each other for years. We're estranged. Turns out. The great incident where we valued cards differently. Grumble, grumble. Um, we could upgrade Eruption. That would be fairly helpful. Um, yeah, I, it's really, really hard for me to imagine <laughs> the, the Chemical X paying off. Uh, are, isn't there another Watcher X cost card? I think there's three. Um, but I can only think of those two. Um, collect, obviously. Here, I should just sort by cost. What am I doing? Yep, it's just those two. Collect and Conjure Blade. Well, darn. That chemical X is really not going to do anything. <laughs> um, that's true. There's a colorless one. I think there's just one, right? And I don't know if I would want that one either. But I mean, <laughs> we have so much leftover money. We have a thousand leftover money. Do we ever recall here? I'm struggling to think of what the good upgrade is. I guess it's Ragnarok. Or Bite, maybe? Scrawl? Rushdown? Yeah, somebody was saying, um, like, Courier would be, like, the best relic we could possibly get. And they are totally correct. We could have bought quite a few relics. And we would have found some good ones, eventually. Um, I think I'm going to upgrade Rushdown instead of Scrawl. They both basically do the same thing. It's like the first time you see it, it costs zero. Um, and you only see it once. But uh, I want Rushdown's um, uh, drawn played rate to go up because we have um, Bird Face to earn. Yeah, recalling early is pretty reasonable too. Um, we don't really need the flexibility though. We can't rest, so it's it's not, re not really, it doesn't really make us more flexible. It kind of just like misses out on power. Uh, we have to go this way for the Mega. The boot is an easy Sapphire key. We've got a tiny Reprimancer. So cute. We have Marbles and Mask. Take that, Artifact Charges. Um, <laughs> establishment. I have done a recall in Act 1. I I mean, sometimes I, I recall an Act 1 or Act 2, but it's it's always, like, because you're just completely, absurdly overpowered, right? It's like, well, I guess I can just recall now. Um, um, sure, either dagger should be fine. Let's see if reality sets up for next turn. Get some establishment value. And we're going to need it, because it's the big old 100 damage turn. Not pulling any punches this time. Um, we have no attacks, basically. And we can't actually survive 100 damage. But we can block for a lot. Um, very hard to have, a, uh, to have a situation where you don't have upgrades that meaningfully improve your ability to win fights. Yeah, exactly. So, like, because we... 
upgraded here, we're like slightly helped out in this fight, and then maybe we lose less health in this fight and that fight, and then we can recall at the end. But it's, it's very possible that we get a card here that has a really good upgrade, and we wish we could use this one for, for an upgrade, so I might recall here, depending on the health situation, which is not looking to be good. Um, major yikes ahead. This is always happening. Um, I think probably we're going to end up windmill striking that guy. Uh, ends up being 12.5 block per energy, which is the best rate we've got. Um, so we're probably going to be windmill strike him, third eye, and protect. And then drink a regen pop. Uh, the one benefit to a mid act 3 recall is it frees you up to rest on demand. Yeah. But we can't rest because we have Coffee Dripper. Is the, is the thing. Context matters. Um, we can't exit stance, we can't draw cards. Uh, the only thing that matters is luck per energy efficiency. Um, Rushdown Eruption seems okay for next turn, especially with the extra energy. Um, I think I'll keep the Empty Fist, too, to exit Wrath. Alright, Ruptomancer, show me what you got. What's that? You've got a lot of damage? Oh. Oh, I see. Crap. Alright. Well, that hurts. Two miracles are happening. Rushdown's happening. And then we're probably gonna eruption, kill both daggers, and exit. Is probably the plan. We can actually go into divinity here. Um so usually if I have eruption, divinity, and empty fist in hand, I will um uh do eruption first and then go into divinity and then empty fist to exit divinity. Um, in this case, we also have an empty mine and a rush down, so that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, but it seems like we can play Eruption, Empty Mine, draw a bunch of cards. That draws five cards, which is actually a little bit too much. So I'll play the Prostrate first. Wait, I'll play the Worship first. Prostrate will get a little bit extra block if we play the, uh, play the attacks before it. Um, and then we need to think about damage efficiency. So, assuming this does 15 damage, um, and these do 21 together, that's not enough to kill anybody. This is going to do 30 damage in Wrath Mode, so that's going to kill one of them by itself. So let's assume Empty Fist is going on this dagger, and put all the other damage on this dagger. Okay, got an extra bite. Um, uh, let's draw some more cards. And go to rat Divinity Mode. Okay, now Consecrate's gonna do a bunch of damage. Uh, we can finish off both daggers. And we need to think about blocking, so we probably wanna play both Protects and an Empty Fist. Or I guess we could play Simmering Fury. If we wanna draw more cards next turn. Uh, drawing more cards next turn seems pretty reasonable. Um, we do not get to go into Wrath mode, so we actually can't have a stance exit, which is a big problem with Simmering Fury, so let's not do that. Okay. Still doing damage, because Riptomancer is a big jerk. We can Third Eye Scrawl to get rid of a bunch of cards and draw a bunch. Um... and Ragnarok with uh, Divinity Mode next turn. Um, I think I like trying to play Ragnaroks with um, in Divinity Mode next turn, so I'm going to Third Eye and clear out the non-Ragnarok cards. Um, and then try to draw those in uh, Divinity Mode. Okay. 
I think we only need one Divinity, or one Ragnarok. Uh, if we go into Ragnarok, or go into Divinity, it says 18 times 6. 18 times 6 is significantly in excess of 106, which is Ragnarok, which is Reckonizer's health. Um, however, 18 is less than a dagger's health, so on average it would hit both the daggers twice and Reptomancer twice, and would not kill Reptomancer. So maybe we just don't even want Ragnarok's. How about that? Let's do that. Um, I'll actually just keep the Flying Sleeves then, and we'll just dig for Retain cards with the Scrawl right now. Um... Okay, so digging with the scrawl looks like this. Okay, so now we can go into the Divinity. And maybe we'll even draw some, uh, Ragnarok's. We did. Um... And we have Flying Sleeves, too. Okay, pretty sure Divinity Mode's happening. Uh, we can kill daggers with these, but we can probably just kill Reptomancer with Windmill Strike. Make sure we get those bites in. Alright. Back to prep Horn Cleat. Ooh, we're well on our way to being a ship captain. We got Anchor Horn Cleat. Just got a hard one to go. It's like when you, um, when you hit a single, a double, and a home run in a game, and people are like, all right, pretty close to the cycle, but you gotta get the, still gotta get the triple. That's the, not a lot of triples get hit. Um, I think it has to be Captain's Wheel. Um, yeah, there it is. Huh, it takes it without the space. So weird. I think we don't want any of these. Alright. Here is our Mind Bloom event. No longer being able to heal is pretty bad, considering we're at 24 and have a bunch of sustain. Um, healing to full is kind of an option. Um, but uh, fighting a boss from Act 1, how, which bosses can we get to full health off of? Um, slime boss, we definitely can. Um, Guardian, I think we can. Hexaghost is a little scary, but actually we're at pretty low health. So the, the usual reason Hexaghost is scary as a Mind Bloom outcome is because you're at like 80 health and he like hits you really hard on turn 2. But currently we're at 24, so he's only going to hit us for like 18 on turn 2, which we can definitely handle. All right, I think we'll, we'll give it a shot. Try and heal off this guy. It is Hexagon. Um, for what it's worth, um, Hexagon measures your attack on turn two. So if we're if we were at twenty three, then um, uh, no, it, it isn't. Um, I've 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 done the uh, I've done the science on this. I've seen it change. If we if we were below twenty, if we were at twenty three and we bit him, he would attack us. Uh, like we were at 24. I have also done science on this. I don't know. I'm not I'm not willing to be convinced, Red Beardy. Maybe, maybe you could show me a clip or something, but um, I'm not going to be easily persuaded. Um, uh, Simmering Fury seems a little bit too dangerous. Like, with... We're in good shape for a Hexagos fight, I think, but not so good that we want to be in Wrath Mode on turn two. Uh, Protect seems good. Uh, yeah, so that blocks out. Bite is the whole objective of the fight. Yeah, it's I. So I have a lot of respect for your understanding of the game, Red Beardy. Um, so I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I don't, I don't know what the the issue is. 
Doesn't seem like we could both be right, though. Um, we wouldn't decost the protects, I guess. Uh, so we'll use third eye to draw some bites. Rush down's worth health, too. Uh, these aren't bites. I guess I'll keep this. No, I have protects in hand. I don't need that. Go ahead and punch him some stuff, why not? Uh, five cards is fine because we've already done day, so it's not enough. Uh, rush down's always happening. Bite is always happening. Uh, protect blocks out perfectly. Maybe we toss out the flying sleeves to get a kunai proc. We've got one card too many, so we gotta make we gotta get rid of something. Um Interesting. So maybe I don't know what I think I know. So it, it was Baylor Lord who originally told me that it was measured on, on turn two. I had assumed that that it was he measured it at the beginning of the fight, but Baylor Lord told, told me I was wrong, and I thought I did science, but maybe maybe I just am still in the trusting Baylor Lord situation. Which is unstable. Um, okay, third eye blocks out, helps me find the bites. Um, I guess I empty mine to shuffle first. Three, six, nine cards in hand. Okay, um, yeah, I mean, your, your certainty certainly counts for something. Um, uh, I guess I'll worship just to get more cards from the scrawl. We'll scroll and then maybe empty mine. Uh, okay, we didn't find any bites somehow. Uh, we could just win the fight, I think. Uh, I guess it's not winning the fight levels. Uh, Pantograph, I think, heals you before the fight. It doesn't like heal you on turn one. So I'm not sure Pantograph would be uh, conclusive. I think the easiest way is, is either Bites or Fruit Juice. I guess Regen Thought would work here. It says at the start of, but that's kind of a wiggle word. I'm not sure that that's uh, worded for absolute clarity. It's funny because, like, uh, for me, my first exposure to, like, card games was Magic, right? And for Magic, they have to word things really carefully so that, like, if you're playing at a kitchen table and you don't have access to computers or errata or anything, you like, you can figure out how it works. You can like rules lawyer it. Um, and it's kind of funny that like over the years, as we've like shifted to digital card games like Slay the Spire and Hearthstone, the rules aren't really on the cards anymore. The cards have some text that helps you indicate, helps indicate what they do, but they don't actually tell you. There's a bunch of stuff that's lies, right? Like, Mummified Hand says, reduce the cost of a card to zero until the end of the turn. Like, that's... The end of the turn is one of the many situations where the cost can get changed back to back to normal. Um, and there's situations where it can dodge get being set to zero at the end of the turn, like if it gets nightmared. Um, anyway. Um... It does, yeah. Mummy 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 breaks if you discard the card, if you play the card, or um, uh, if the turn ends, uh, whether the card's in your hand or not. Um, okay. Uh, do we play Ragnarok just to get some damage in, so that we can end the fight at some point, or do we just wait for bites? We're certainly playing Third Eye and looking for bites. Take a protect just for safety. Um, this doesn't kill him, right? Because 15 times 5 is 75. Oh, that's fine. Um, I will allow him to take 75. And let's use Empty Mind to draw some cards. Get some of those sweet, sweet bites. Okay. Uh, we could play Flying Sleeves to just get it out of hand. We're going to run into hand size problems eventually. 
might as well. Well, I guess I'll decost it since we're not running into hand size issues right right now. Okay. We can almost go back into Divinity. Not quite. Third Eye gives us the bites. Frostrate gives us Divinity next turn. We don't need Divinity. Um. Yeah, it's it's really interesting that like <laughs> that it's the uh, yeah. There's there's very few things that we don't know. I always like I do my stream and then I go raid 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 beard and I'm like raid beard. I learned something today. And you're like yeah, I already knew that. Obviously, such a noob, bitch. Uh, okay. I thought it was cool. Uh, let's get this flying sleeves out of hand. We need to heal for a bunch. I'm not quite getting there fast enough. So we're skipping Ragnarok this time, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five retained cards. That's okay. Right. Oh, wait, I missed one. There's six. Sorry. Um, imagine missing a card draw when you're looking for bites. Um, now that we're done doing damage, I think we go into Divinity to avoid doing too much damage and killing him. Um, let's see, how many more bites do we need? We, are, uh, we need two more to get to 50, and then six more, so eight total. There are four in the deck. I guess one of them heals for three, awkwardly. So we need to shuffle once more. Uh, shuffling is getting a little bit tougher because we're getting some burns. And we're going to have to survive a 36 damage attack. I guess we're pretty well equipped to survive that. Although we're going to lose one of these protects this turn. Um... Are you talking about how, like, the random number generator interacts with... Uh with, like, other random effects that can happen. Um, I don't I don't have a clear uh, mental model of, like, how many random number generators um, the Spire keeps. Like, because clearly, I think that if you, like, set a, a specific seed, like, the first two monsters you fight will be the same no matter what your, like, pathing decisions are and no matter, like, how you perform in those fights. So that clearly indicates that the, like, randomness for powering in-combat events is different from powering um, the layout generation. Although, it's possible that the layout generation is just all run at the beginning. Um, interesting. Why would Havoc do it? Havoc isn't even random. Um... But anything with a random effect should do it, right? Like, even just playing, like, Ragnarok, choosing a random target, as long as it, as long as there are multiple random targets to choose from, should, uh, should advance some counter um, with potentially measurable effects. Um, well, using the RNG does have to advance the RNG, because otherwise you'd get the same random event multiple times in a row. I know that sometimes if you, um, I, at least I've had it happen where you go into a hallway fight and then you try and restart the fight and get a different fight. I've had that happen in Act 1 where, like, I had, um, like, s the Slaver, um, at Slime fight and then I, uh, or maybe, maybe it was Act 2? And then I refreshed and got a different, like, Slave, I got, like, Slaver Jawworm? Wait, who does Slaver come with? Maybe I just got a different color slime or something? Um, so those are, uh, those are random in a way that doesn't actually correspond with the, uh, the RNG, which is, uh, upsetting. Um, we... I think I play Worship Empty Fist just to get some damage in. Um, we only need, what did I say, um, like eight more bites, so we don't need them to have this much health. 
Uh, Deceiver Alex is a great way to block this turn. Go ahead and block, defend to block the burn damage. Always oh, getting the bites in. Um, I am not sure if we need that or not. Alright, Wallop is also here to protect us. Seems like we're gonna be fine. Um, go ahead and let Wallop it in. Double safety. I guess um, technically you should play protect over playing safety because protect you can redraw, and I might not have an opportunity to play another attack before the end of the shuffle. But it's really unlikely to matter because we're fighting a hexagos and he's at thirty. Uh, let's go ahead and draw some cards and get a single bite. That's what I would like. This windmill strike is an excellent little. Oh, oops, we got too many burns. We can't block. Uh, let's end the fight button. Uh, looks like we are running out of protects, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get enough bites. We're running out of time here. And it looks like time has expired. Uh, we get more. Protect this next turn. But I think that's too late. I think we just end the fight here. We're taking 18. That's 6 damage. That'd be th we'd have to make uh, make up 3 bites. And 53 is the best we can do here. But we healed for a bunch in this fight, so I'll take it. We did miss one draw, but... Thread and Needle. And Swift Pot. The Swift Pot ends up healing us for 5, so we're almost in nice HP. Uh, Foresight is great. We've kind of a thick deck, so getting extra scrying helps us find the stuff we need. A lot of times we're looking for bites while we're trying to delay a fight, so Foresight helps us find those. It also heals us for two itself. Um, it kind of makes the deck more consistent, but it also forces the deck to play a Foresight. So we have to draw that card and spend one energy on it, which is not ideal. I think we've got our fill of Flying Sleeves. Two is enough. Maybe too many. And just lucky is okay. Um, combats and events are seated in a list, the way relics are seated in the list by rarity. Makes sense. Um, uh, wait. I thought drink, having fairy in a, proccing fairy in a bottle did not proc to iron it does it really? Um, we're skipping those. Uh, let's go walk in here. I guess we are at full health. Um, so, thanks, Hexaghost. None of these upgrades are great, so I think we're just going to recall here in case we get a card that has a good upgrade from the Mega Elite fight. Um, so if you have a 4-3 combat and 4-4 event versus a 4-3 event and 4-4 combat, you will have the same event and combat on either path. Only the order of the encounter changes. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier with the, the like, in-fight RNG not changing the, the path RNG. Oh, I see what you mean. You mean that, like, the, um, the events and encounters are all queued up at the beginning. That seems like a weird way to operate your random, randomness, but I guess it, it works. I guess it makes sense because they don't want... They don't want you to encounter the same event twice, so if you just put them in a list, then, like, um, you're guaranteed to not event encounter the same one twice until you've gone through the whole list. They probably, during development, they probably thought about it as a deck, where you draw a card from a deck and that's the event that you're in. And they've since hidden all that stuff from UI, but, um, but it still functions as a deck by ordering it at the beginning, shuffling a deck. Uh, we are already blocked out. Um, so I guess we'll just play some powers. Um, and... Hmm, if we play Simmering Fury, we kind of have to play the Miracles, because we draw nine cards and we're retaining two. Um, I don't really want to play 
the Mercury. I'm just not going to. How do we kill spikers this deck? Hmm. Yeah, you know, I have noticed that turn one colorless bot will not always be the same choices. That's true. That's, uh, that's really bad. It's like a big opportunity for saves coming. Be like, well, I need this specific outcome, so I'll just reload the plate until I get it. Um, Wallop is a positive block against Spikers currently, but not against Sphere 30. Um, I think we'll take damage against Spikers when we can get it. I'm not 100% sure how we are getting enough block to uh, block him out. Uh, he's hitting us for 11. We're currently blocked for 23, so we can punch a Spiker again. Um, I guess we're going to punch both Spikers is what we're going to do. Do Consecrate. Um, so we're at 36. We take 14. 14 plus 11 is not 36. Okay. So, Macho Tank, there, there are lots of things that you can cheat the game in doing if you're willing to uh, reload a fight over and over and over. But I think that um, the only person you're cheating really is yourself. Right? So, you gotta look into your heart and think to yourself do I want to save scum for a specific thing? Because you're gonna, you're gonna teach yourself that you can, you, you can have your, your rich dad get you out of trouble, you know? gonna have less character at the end of the day. Um, okay, can we triple attack and then uh, deceive reality smite, or safety? We have bite, flying sleeves, windmill strike for our three attacks. Uh, it is, yeah, it is interesting. Um, okay, so we played the three attacks. Um, Play this and that. We need some more blocks, so we'll do. Let's see. 22 plus 9 is 31. We are at 29, so we're off by 12. So I guess we're gonna play both. Okay. Uh, we can go into Divinity. Divinity mode, double bite, probably kill Spirit Guardian. Um, 24 plus 21. Yeah. Uh, it seems reasonable, considering we... I guess we can block. Um, but I'd rather just have him out of the fight. So we can focus on the Sphere Guardians. Okay, getting some protects decosted seems good. Bite is probably not the most efficient way to deal damage. I guess wait until the frail wears off. I think we see pick here. That's the first time Orc Alchem is triggered in the run. Um, oh wait, I have the thing, don't I? Oh, I'm not running mods, but if I had mods, it would tell me how many times it would trigger. It was triggered. I'm sure it would say zero or one now. Still frail. Um, so we'll play this to get a thingamajiggy. Um, it was an unwinnable fight. First three turns were wrong draws, so I showed off how it can go differently by playing turn one in different orders. Same card as different ordering. God, that's maddening. Why, why would that even change anything? Um, huh. Wait, you're saying that playing cards changed the order of your draw pile? Um, uh, what relic, what mod is that? Um, I don't, I can't see what mods I have installed without disrupting the, uh, change order of the shuffle. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay. Um, third Eye Vigilance blocks a, I guess just Third Eye, um, I guess this is the most efficient damage. 
card. Uh, so that blocks for 13, so we can bite the spiker. Okay. Alright, we need to block for 9. That is what protects do currently. I guess I'm playing a third eye too. Um. It's weird that the order of those cards affects the order of other cards, though. It seems like... Um, it seems like the the way that the random card, random numbers get distributed to cards would just... Like, if you swapped two cards in their play order, it would swap those two cards in the shuffle. And you wouldn't be able to tell if you'd only swapped two defends. But maybe that's... I guess that's not how, how the... Uh, Shuffle order works. If we play an extra protect, we can get an extra attack here. Um, seems okay. Um, I guess it'll just be a big attack. So that kills one of them. So if we kill him, then we are blocking for essentially nine more. Can't really kill him. We can put him low. Okay. All uh, right. So we can block for 17 and then finally go. Okay, great. That fight's so frustrating. Uh, I don't think we need any of these. More flying sleeves is a pass. I talked about inner piece at the shop uh, when we had 1600 gold um, and decided against it. The main reason being we only have one calm enter. Uh, we're mainly entering and exiting Wrath and Divinity here. Perseverance, I think, is a no. We've got plenty of cards like that already. Uh, Flurry of Blows is, is interesting still. Um, but I think we've been, been able to trigger Kunai sort of enough as is. And the cost of drawing Flurry of Blows is too high. Although now we've got... Um, I think since the last time we saw um, Flurry of Blows, we've gained two Third Eyes and an empty mine, so like maybe we have enough draw to sort of mitigate the cost of adding a flurry of blows. Someone could make a mod to show the internal index of each card to prove it. Um, hmm. Oh shoot. Flurry of blows. What do you do? Being a 34 card deck is Pretty terrible. Don't like it. But getting more kunai procs is really good. I think if we had a flurry of blows, there would be more turns where we get like two kunai procs. Um, it's bad against the heart, though, isn't it? Uh, Blessing the Forge versus Swift Pot. What do we do with Blessing of the Forge? Blessing of the Forge can hit Miracles, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, I've already got a lot of upgraded cards, though. So it's probably not too, too valuable. Swift Pot gets us out of some, some jams. Alright, another Nemesis. Classic Nemesis. Wait a minute, so if the, um... If the... If the Elites are ordered before you encounter them, then why can you encounter one elite twice without encountering all three of them. Because you can go like Gremlin Knob, Logaboo, and Gremlin Knob, right? So it's a, that's like not what I would expect based on the the like deck that you draw elites from analogy. Um, you think it's rude to overlap with Dane, but you're fine overlapping with me? That's rude. Uh, oh, so the, the the seed is just the vent. Or the... I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. Uh, I think I will... Eruption Flying Sleeves, is that... Wise? No, that is not wise. That's wrong. Because I could get, be getting attacked for 90 next turn if I do that. We do have a Swift Pot, so we, we can get out of trouble. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe the Swift Pot convinces me to... Um, 
go into wrath, but I don't want to drink the swift bot unless I'm healing for five. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Whenever people overlap, it's a mutual offense. <laughs> we should just split up Slay with Fire so that only one person is ever streaming at a time. Be tough to get. Like Jorbs and uh, Bela Lord in on that plan, though. Um. Uh, let's see. I don't know, if he's attacking for 90, yeah, we're totally dead if he attacks for 90. Okay, let's not let him attack for 90. Okay, Wallop is useless, he's intangible. Um, we've already blocked for 14, we only need to block for 7 more. Um, we use the safety so that we can the protect and keep decosting. And we have three attacks, so we should probably play them to get decks. Um, we could, like, double miracle scrawl here to do some stuff. But, um, he's intangible, so this is, <laughs> seems like kind of the wrong time for it. Uh, I guess we could draw miracles with that play. Okay, I'm gonna do that. We could draw miracles and or uh, not miracles, um, worship. We could draw worship and powers. Cool. That's a worship. I guess I don't want to play it now. I want to decost it. I'm excited. Uh, we don't really need bites next turn. Um, or a okay, in particular. No, no. Yeah. Sorry. I was just joking to say it's, it's rude to, to share a slot. Um, I see. Yeah, I noticed that you um, you switched um, from because there was a period of time where you were streaming before me and you'd raid me all the time, and then you switched and now you stream after me. And I'm always happy to raid you. I think that I, I, don't, I don't consider us to be in competition. I think we're we're both working together towards a similar goal of building a community. We're participants in that community together. Just to be 100 percent clear, um, but. Uh, um, but yeah, we, we've, we've switched orders. Um, bite doesn't do much, but it does one damage. Uh, Simmering Fury seems ill-advised, considering I'm holding a bunch of retained cards. Just decost those dead boys. You're doing the win rate project and you want to wake up more phrase with the cigarettes. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, cool. How's your win rate project going? Is your is your uh, silent win rate increasing? Um, we could go into wrath mode right now, or uh, divinity. I'm not sure why we would want to do that. Uh, it seems like maybe decosting windmill strength. He's wise. <laughs> Low success, high interest. I love it. Um, yeah, this game's hard. I don't think... Uh, at no amount of sitting there and thinking about it is really going to like solve the game, right? Um, like, Life Coach was able to get a really high win rate, but I think even he got fairly lucky to get a streak as long as he did. Um, and that was with a lot of thinking and playing only the best character. <laughs> is not something other people have, uh, have done a lot of. Um, I think that's happening so that we can Divinity next turn. I guess we can Divinity next turn no matter what because we have both. Um, nothing else matters. Let's see, are we saving a safe amount of cards? We're not. We need to get rid of some cards. Okay. Uh, there we go. Hold both Worships. And I guess we'll get rid of a zero cost protect. What if he attacks for 45? Um, we will draw a third eye defend and two protects. So 26 plus um, 10, 36, 
42, so we're only taking 3 damage. It's okay. We retain 5 cards. I guess I should have gone into Calm. There was no reason not to go into Calm. He is attacking for 45. It's a jerk. Um, can you believe this guy? Uh, we could go into Divinity and then exit for a bunch of energy. Seems bad. Um, Alright. Third Eye doesn't prescribe anything. Oh wait, I forgot about... Um, what is that relic called? Third Natal, so we're actually not taking damage. Alright, can we kill him yet? Um, we go into Divinity and then... Windmill Strike, not enough damage. We can just Simmering Fury and probably kill him next turn, I think. He is also just, like, really good. <laughs> no, no doubt, like, um, he's a good player. Uh, we ha we could Eruption now, but it, it would actually disrupt the, um, the Rushdown draw. Uh, yeah, killing next turn is, is not happening. Um, I don't think that's happening. Um, but killing next cycle is what I meant. Um, next turn, we're going to potentially go into Divinity twice. Go into Divinity naturally and then double worship. Go in again. Uh, but I guess we need to go into Divinity now so that we can exit Wrath. Because we're getting punched for a lot. We don't have enough block. Uh, Alright. Yikes. I don't want those. Do we have lethal, please? When will strike is going to do 99 damage. That's stylish. Um, and then this does what? 42. Seems lethal. 99. Okay. Ooh, Vajra. That's our first strength scale. Pretty happy to see that. Uh, Prey has been a no historically. I think it's going to continue to be a no. Rushdown is out. We don't need two of those. Um, and Sash Whip, uh, I think, is a no. So we're skipping on all these. Been skipping quite a bit on the last couple of picks because we're at 33 cards. And we're pretty sensitive to deck quality. So we need to only pick good stuff. Uh, it would be nice to get a Protect upgraded. I guess that's what we're doing. Uh, actually, Ragnarok upgrade's pretty good. Uh, let's see, Ragnarok upgrade at this point is doing 7 times 6, um, so uh, that ends up being 21 times 6. 21 times 6 is 126. Uh, if we upgrade it, if we don't upgrade it, it does 6 times 5, which is um, uh, 18 times 5. 18 times 5 is a little bit less than 100. Seems like a pretty valuable upgrade. Fine. Right. Um, yeah, I'm not really, like, a big fan of the, like, win streak culture in Slay the Spire streaming, because, um, it's just, like, it's, it, the game is clearly very random, and, and like, uh, anytime you're trying to get a streak out of a random thing, you're going to be extremely sensitive to, like, ra random events, um, so the, the streak ends up being, like, can you play really well but really well and like a lot. So like the more you play, the the more likely you are to get a, a long win streak. And that just seems like sort of an arbitrary way to decide who's the best at playing. Uh, we've blocked out, so let's bite him.
Did we? Sorry, I'm gonna restart the fight because I just took voluntary damage. I did the math wrong. Speaking of speaking of good and bad slaves, firefly. Oof. That's uh. I think I would like to keep that. Uh, okay. How did this not work out? Yeah, we. I don't know why I thought this was 24. This is clearly not 24. Okay. Uh, it would be nice to get Rushdown developed. Um, it would also be nice to heal with Rushdown. That might be relevant later. I guess if we need healing, we'll have points. Um, it looks like this is going to be a big energy turn. A big card draw turn with an empty mind and a sprawl in hand. Two miracles. So let's uh, clear out some chaff. Um... And I think I'm going to sprawl and then potentially empty mind after that. I guess uh, Third Eye both helps us draw higher quality cards and draws us one extra card. Don't need that. Um, second Third Eye seems great. We don't really need to play Ragnarok yet. Okay. Uh, Prostrate is always getting played, but we might want to get a Dex proc first. Uh, is that happening? We'd have to be like the Eruption Empty Fist if we wanted to get a Dex proc, so I think probably not happening. Um, although, maybe we do want an Eruption uh, Empty Fist. We could Eruption Wallop Empty Fist. Or just Eruption Wallop, is that true? If we just Eruption hits for 60. Wallet blocks for 26, takes us up to 49, uh, 53 with the, uh, the thing. So we would actually, let's see, 53 plus um, 5, 58. So we'd be off by 2. Um, but we'd have one energy left, so we could third time. Just stay in wrath mode this turn. We have. Um, we, we can enter Divinity on Demand, so if we get in trouble next turn, we can get out. Okay. Guess it's a little extra damage. Oh, the Rushdown draws, darn it. Um, oh, right, we're not getting stuck because we're playing Empty Fist. Um, I guess we don't have to play Empty Fist, is, is what I was thinking. But Empty Fist does 30 damage, why wouldn't I want to play Empty Fist? <laughs> yeah, you're definitely definitely trying really hard. Uh, I don't know if it's... I think you're, you're tryharding approximately the same amount as Life Coach. I hope that's not that's not seen as a, as a judgment, but Life Coach had some extremely long runs. <laughs> Uh, right, let's do this. Uh, Ragnarok next turn seems good. We're probably going into Divinity next turn. Um, let's keep the high value stuff. And get some free mantra. Okay. I uh, need to block for 30. Um, no. No sneaky wallops available this turn. Um, we can go into Divinity for free. Uh, probably want to play both of these so that we shuffle them. And get back to going into Divinity again. Probably want to play Ragnarok while we're in Divinity, because it's a bunch of damage. We're going to win the fight at some point. So let's get those two things done and see where we're at. Oh. Apparently, Ragnarok wants Decca to die first. Not normally my preference, but who am I to argue with Ragnarok? Uh, we don't have lethal right now. I don't think. 30 plus 27 is 57, plus 72 is not close. Um. So let's continue focusing on Donu. 
I do want him to die first. And this doesn't quite block out. I guess we can double protect Deceive Reality. That's probably the line. Oh wait, this does block out. Okay, so we'll fit in a bite. I'm always forgetting about Thread Needle. Um, yeah, I would like to keep the drop out if we can, but it's not always possible. Um, 13, 23, plus 16 is 39, not lethal. Um, hmm. Taking some damage here. Can't go into Divinity. Um, I guess I should have, I would have blocked for one more if I had, um, Played three attacks first. I guess there was no way to play three attacks. Um, All right, fine. Give me my Centennial Puzzle Draws. Gotta get some bites. Get them back. Um, we can't go into Divinity because we only have one Worship. Um, Windmill Strike does some good damage. Um, let's see, I would like to execute Donu before he buffs again. Be nice. But it's a lot of damage this turn that we would need. We can't go into Divinity, so it's probably not happening. Okay, so let's just focus on blocking then. See if reality is happening. Um, play the safety so we can decon to protect. We block for 36. That's 13 more. I guess that's just probably the deck as well. Okay. And I guess we need to bite back some health. Um, we have the option to get a Kunai proc with Bite, Windmill, Strike, Flying Sleeves. I would love to save the Windmill Strike for when we're in Divinity, though. Um, so maybe we just ignore that. We could just Simmering Fury here. Uh, we are retaining quite a few cards, though. Yeah, I think I'll just put a cast. Okay, two worships, so we can go into Divinity. Um, we have to do 44 damage. This does way over that much. So easy to get lethal here. Um, okay. Gosh, that's a lot of damage. Maybe we can get that much with just this. Yeah, this does 60 with the two Flying Sleeves. So I guess I'll um, windmill strike him. There is some value to flying sleevesing on Decca, since he's got uh, three plated armor, but three is not that large, so I don't really need to do the extra two damage to it. So I'll go ahead and enter Calm, because why not? We don't have lethal, so we're going to take some damage. Block is not useful next turn, although I will keep it protect. Um, Frustrate's kind of interesting, because next turn we'll have six. Frustrate would take us up to nine. So we'd get probably lethal on the following turn. Two Ragnaroks, almost certainly. Actually, maybe we just leave all of this because this guarantees that next turn we don't draw Ragnarok, and then we can prostrate and set up for Ragnarok's with Divinity. Unless we're trying to extend the fight for Bites. But I think we're not. Next boss fight. Uh, 
Okay. Ooh. A bite is offered, thanks to my lovely wife. Um, establishment needs to happen, even though he gets strunk. Um, let's draw some bonus cards. Okay, prostrate blocks out this turn. We can play Deceive Reality to set up a safety for later. And we can play Ragnarok while everybody's vulnerable. It's kind of fun. We do need to be getting bites in, but we should be able to farm Awakened One for dex and health in the first phase. So we should be able to enter second phase with a million dex and full health. Hopefully that isn't too ambitious. Um... We do need to kill the, um, the cultists first, so let's hit Ragnarok, hit him a bit. Or just awakened one repeatedly, that's fine too, I guess. Sort of. They are attacking for 36, block for 14. Need to find 22 block. Double protect does that. Wallop protect does that. Wallop safety does that. A lot of options here. Uh, empty mind can draw some cards, get some more protect thing, get some more retained cards down to zero. Double flying sleeps wallop. Uh, accomplishes a couple of things. Gives us a dex. Blocked out. Or helps block out. Uh, flying suits are a little bit sad to not be paired up with Divinity Mode. But I think that'll just the deal. Uh, does Third Eye also block out? Let's see, 36, we're at 31. Yeah, it does. Uh, Alright, so we'll take some bites and go into Wrath next turn, I think. 14 damage on that front cultist looks pretty tasty. Uh, what do you need me to remind you about Red Bearding? Wallop overrides panic button. Does it? I don't. I don't. I, I. I. don't think I've had that interaction, so I don't know. All right, we're in Rag Wrath, so we can Ragnarok people. Ragnarok also kills him quite efficiently. We have Empty Fist, so we have an exit. He's going to be hitting for forty. So double protect is going to be blocking for um, 26. Um, I don't believe it overrides bank, but it's possible it does. But uh, so I guess uh, blocking for 39 is fine. So we'll Ragnarok, rush down, empty fist, triple, big block. Okay, and. They were both dead, as planned. Oh, crap. The rush down makes it get extra ball. Um, Probably a mistake they really didn't hit us. Um, I didn't, wasn't thinking about rush down properly. Panic button is extremely weird. I think that's the, the real learnings here. 
I have no intuition about how panic button is supposed to work because it works in a very odd way. Um, we could eruption to draw cards and then worship to escape wrath mode. It's kind of fun. We have three, six, nine cards in hand, so drawing two is safe. These two block for 21 plus 3, not quite getting there. If I play these two first, we block for 2 extra. Then we do quite a bit of extra damage. Am I okay with doing 60 damage here? I think so. And then we block up. Alright, um, so this box for 28, 28 plus the 11 is 39, sitting for 48, not quite enough, so I'll probably just defend as well. Yeah, panic makes no sense. Unbelievably silly. We can prostrate and worship the block to enter divinity, but why? Um, prostrate double third eye blocks out. Do that. We don't want to kill him, so we don't want Ragnarok. Deceive reality and protect our great. Defend seems like a bit much. Mm, I'll keep it anyway. We don't want to empty fist because we want to keep his health around so that we can get dex and health out of him. Maybe we flying sleeves to shuffle it? No, we need flying sleeves to proc good eye, maybe. Okay. If you are in divinity mode and you gain 10 mantra, what happens? Do you enter divinity again? Do you lose your mantra? Dex proc here. We also want to avoid Windmill Strike hanging out in hand too much, because then the damage is going to get too high um, for us to be able to play it. Uh, I guess we can't get a Dex proc and then also play the third eye? Oh wait, we can. We can do it in a sneaky way. We can like play the three attacks and then play Worship for extra energy. Um, and then like defend third eye with the bulk. all good for getting decks and block. Well, Alright, we're a little bit behind. I guess we could... If 
we play this swift pot, we draw a text. It should be okay. We'll take one. Not a huge deal. I'm just gonna turn off my camera while I'm eating as well. Sorry, I'll be back in just a second. There's no point in holding onto the swift pot, because we're going to find a better potion in the Act 4 shop where we have a million gold. And uh, we're going to be there right after this fight. Okay, I'm back now. Um, so we got Ragnarok doing 42 damage. 42 plus 6 is 48, plus 15 is um, 63. We're okay with doing 63 damage to get a dex proc? Probably not. Um, let's give him a sec to get his bearings back after was the pummeling we've been giving him. I can't get him back. That is true. There you go. Look at that, like magic. Just click a button and bam! Web-based camera technology. We don't really need worship, we're at 7 on the clock. We've got the prostrate, so we can go in if we want. Actually, we don't need the prostrate either, we got a worship in hand. Alright, triple bite, that's what we want to see. Decks here with uh, Bite Windmill Strike Flying Sleeves, um, which seems fine. We haven't left Windmill Strike in our hand even once, um, which is odd, because like on whatever, floor two or something when we picked Windmill Strike, you would think that like the first thing we'd want to do in a boss fight is like leave Windmill Strike in our hand forever so it gets a bunch of damage. 
and we can kill the boss with that damage, but in reality, we don't care about the damage from Windmill Strike, we care about the Kunai procs. Um, uh, wall up is great. Uh, we don't really need empty fifth, there's three attacks right here. So. Okay. I guess we're in Divinity. Uh, we can't exit. And this would do too much damage to kill him. So we don't get our dex this turn. It's okay, we're just letting him heal. Okay. Um, Super Reality Third Eye blocks out. Um, sets up some attacks and stuff for next turn. Submarine Fury is safe-ish. Yeah, we have Vigilance, so that's safe. Um, I guess we'll toss the Worship so that we get, get an extra card draw. Uh, triple Bite's nice. Uh, let's empty mine first so we don't do too much damage. Um, I guess we will... Protect first, and then I think we need double protect this turn. Yeah, we need 48 blocks, so 42 is a good start. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw a safety away for uh, four health. Okay. We have three attacks, one of them is Ragnarok. Uh, it's a bit of damage. 42, 52, 58. Yeah, I'll do 58. Mm, actually, I kind of want to block with Third Eye Defend, so I don't have enough energy to do it all. I guess I could go into Divinity just for the energy. Sure, why not? Uh, Turn. Do we hold the windmill strike finally? Um, I guess so. Um, wallop bite flying sleeves blocks out. Almost back to full health. And we need block for 35 more. 48 is total. Okay, I should do it. I guess we'll hold the windmill strike for the second phase. Might as well. Um, empty fist, bite, flying sleeves, doesn't kill him. 10, 25, 33. Almost up to full health. Um, we have to spend our safety of our last resources. Go ahead and throw that last bite in there full health. Okay, I think we're ready to split him pretty soon. Maybe next turn. Uh, I'd like to draw a couple more protects before we go to second phase and be ready to go back into Divinity. So I'll keep him low and develop a safety. And maybe do it next turn. If we draw another worship or something. Um, didn't draw it. Being in calm is nice too, sure. Um, I guess we can get one more proc, maybe? He's got enough health now. Or, well, I guess we could just stack up Windmill Strike. Theoretically, we could just kill him with Divinity Mode Windmill Strike from the, from the second phase. Um, I don't 
take that. Uh, okay, Flying Sleeves Concentrate Bite is a proc. Uh, 10, 16, 24 damage. That just means it's a proc without splitting him. Um, is there a reason we're not splitting him? Seems like pretty well set up. Got two, uh, two mon warships in hand. Um, I guess the reason we're not splitting him is we don't have enough damage currently. Play the worship draw card. Okay, we want to split him this turn because we're good. At, we got a free divinity coming next turn, and we can split him and get a proc here, which seems ideal. Okay, retaining five cards seems correct. All right, we're in divinity. We've got Ragnarok. We've got Windmill Strike. Um, if he's dead. Hey, Sir Animal. You got to Hard Mode 7 from Warriors of the Nile, and I uninstalled the game. Uh, lose 5 health on market. Wow. Uh, that seems unfun. Okay. Let's go to Act 4. Did that say 23-22? That's a lot of points for X3. I guess we got Black Star, so we hunted some relics. We got a lot of money, too. We give you points for that, for some reason. Um, eruption? The store can't give you um, Courier, can it? Because Courier at the store would be nuts. Good, good, sir, Edible. Yeah, losing f five health for everybody whenever you embark is crazy. That game already, like, is super stingy with the healing. Having you decay in health is just mean. Um, I feel like we're too slow for the Act 4 Elites in the heart. Like, when we scale up, we can do fine against Awakened One, right? Like... That's not really too much of a test. Um, I guess the way we fix being too slow is we upgrade eruption. Let's give that a shot. I'm, I'm not confident. This is gonna do well. All right. Um, pretty much just buying everything we think we might want. Um, hand drill is actually pretty good. Hand drill. Um, Actually, I guess hand drill is primarily useful for getting rid of um, artifact charges on spire elites, but we already have mask and uh, marbles for that. Uh, turnip is great. I like turnip a lot. Buy that one. Um, smooth stone's fine. Uh, wait a minute. Ancient potion's really good, right? Ancient potion versus the heart gets rid of the the vulnerable, so we're getting rid of the vulnerable and the frail. Let's turn it. Uh, that seems pretty good. And then we get rid of a bite. Might as well buy a hand pot, hand drill. Um, is it a bite or is it a defend? I think it's a bite. A little bit too many bites in the deck. Um, cut through fate, it's free. Otherwise, we're going to end this run with 400 gold. Um, yep, I think we're just ending the run with 400 gold. I don't think I want a, a free cut through fate. Uh, or a free foresight. Metamorphosis seems like a terrible idea. But maybe it's really good, I don't know. Uh, I guess if we're, like, if we think we're way behind... Metamorphosis is a good idea, because Metamorphosis could give us, like, five random uh, Ragnarok pluses. Or I guess they're not upgraded, huh? They cost zero, but aren't upgraded. It's not a crazy idea. 
some of the attacks have card draw. Actually, forethought's kind of fine. We could do forethought and then scrap, and then uh, if we get forethought and what's it called, um, scrawl to line up, discount our whole hand to zero, draw ten cards. Uh, that'd be neat. Hard to imagine actually picking the forethought though. Um. Looks like we're doomed to never have the chemical axe proc. It's pro probably a good thing. Um, maybe I do want a chemical cut through fate? I don't know. Maybe we could use another attack, especially since we just got rid of a cut. Metamorphosis is also more attacks. Maybe this is the run where we turn into a beautiful butterfly at the top of the spire. I don't really know. Um, seems like the heart is going to be a challenge. Alright, I'm going to do it. As I both. So we just really dramatically ramped up the amount of uh, card draw and attacks. I think we're going to take the empty mind too, because we need the card draw now that we've got a bunch of zero cost attacks. Alright, this is probably a horrible mistake. Alright. Get rid of all those artifact charges. Give me an extra relic. We did get the Metamorphosis on turn one. Um, I would consider this the good start to the fight um, when Spire is attacking. It means you're getting attacked for uh, 33 on turn one, but getting attacked for 33 on turn one and then Spire Spear doing his big attack and Spire Shield not attacking on turn two is better than getting attacked for 12 on turn one and then like 100 on turn two. Um, I don't think we can skip Establishment, and outside that it's probably either Protect Third Eye or Vigilance Third Eye. Vigilance Third Eye only blocks for 19, so we'd take uh, quite a bit of damage. Oh, actually, wait, hold on, we're already blocking for 14, so we only need to block for 19 here, which is exactly what that does. Okay, so that's pretty much the best case scenario, we get to decost, Protect, keep the Flying Sleeves. We don't get to fit in Metamorphosis, but it's probably a mistake to ever take Metamorphosis, so it's probably fair. Um, Worship seems good, Third Eye seems good, Empty Mind seems good, I think Bite's bad. Okay. Thanks, Ship Captain Relics. You guys are really good in Act 4. Uh, third Eye plus Empty Mind draws us some good cards that help us block for 40. Uh, we're already blocked for, uh, 18, so we just need, uh, 22 more. We can do that with Third Eye Protect if we need to. Prostate would be nice to get this turn. Um, I would love to get a proc to a Kunai proc. So maybe we go like this and hope that the last card is a playable attack, like a one, one energy attack. The cut through fate, a bite, one of those. I guess it doesn't have to be one energy because we're uh, empty mining. It is the cut through fate. Excellent. Uh, well, we want the attacks first. And I think we want to target Spire Spear, so we're going to just let those go. And we could take a defend and get a scrawl next turn. Scrawl next turn seems like a good idea. And we're blocked out mostly. We do lose uh, one artifact, or one, um, what should we call it, plated armor. If we don't play protect, but we get to keep protect. We're currently taking three damage. Um, take three damage. We also draw a bunch more when we do that. Which is good, because we're going into Divinity next turn. Although we did set up Scrawl for next turn, so maybe that's not great. Oh well. Uh, 
Um, we can heal for three pretty easily, so the only real loss there is the plated armor. Um, Alright, so we want to turn around, and I always forget how much Spire Shield attacks for. Is it 34? Um, it is 38. Okay, so we need to block for 38 and turn around. We've already blocked for 3, so we need to block for 35. Protects don't quite do that. We need to get Wallop in on it as well, probably. Uh, but Divinity Wallop is probably going to do it. Let's develop Rush Down and go into Wrath. And then let's get rid of most of his armor. So we can wallop him for some good block. Um, do we just wallop him and take two? Oh wait, we're not taking two because we would uh, would block with the plated armor. Great. Um, oh, we can just kill him. Okay, well that seems good. Um, scroll for seven cards to find more retain stuff. Seems okay. Darn. Um, we could Miracle Empty Fist just to do a bunch of damage. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I, I was not... Radar was... Lethal was not on my radar until after the wall up, and I was like, oh. Okay. Uh, I'll save some block for next turn, just the uh, safety. Yes, we do have a lot of relics. Uh, we've got a second bar with uh, with quite a few up there. Uh, we took picked a black star, and then this is our seventh elite after that. So we got a bunch from that. We also got a uh, membership card, and then got an absurd amount of money, and just bought all of the relics at all the shops we went to. Um... And still have more money than we could spend. We bought a Metamorphosis Plus just for, for fun, basically. Because um, it certainly isn't good. Um, wow, I've never had a third bar. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. If we'd gotten a, if we'd gotten a courier in this run, we could have gotten to the third bar, I think. Um, as for right now, I think we're going to play the Protect, and then Vigilance Empty Mind. We blocked out. I was hoping for some attacks here. Um, I guess Double Third Eye helps me find some. Metamorphosis Third Eye. Hmm. Put the zero cost attacks on top. Okay, what just happened? Did we get two Flurry of Blows? <laughs> okay. Um, well. Sash Whip Signature Move. God, that card is terrible. Why did I... Why did I buy that? Okay, all right. Uh, Ragnarok is probably lethal next turn. What are we trying to set up? Sundial is the only setup relic we have somehow, even though we have all the relics. Okay. <laughs> Jeez, Timnos, gosh. Why'd you, why'd you make me do that? Um, no, you didn't even recommend it. Somebody else actually recommended it. It was Sir Artemal. Sir Artemal is the scapegoat here. <laughs> oh, maybe the point of your statement was that by having an artificial scapegoat, we escape the need for a real scapegoat. And then I immediately ruined it by creating a real scapegoat. Um, do we have lethal with Worship Prostrate Ragnarok? Uh, oh, did you? Uh, okay, so Worship Prostrate Ragnarok does 18 times 6. 18 times 6 is like 100 and something. Uh, it's 60 plus 40, so it's 100 exactly. Oh, it's 108? Really? I guess it's plus 48. Okay, that makes sense. Sure. So that should be enough with the character out of this mic. It's 108. 
All right, we got bronze scales for the heart and blood vial to round out getting every single source of sustain. We have um, we have bites. We have bird face urn. We have toy ornithopter. We have eternal fe feather, uh, and we have blood vial. So we got almost every single one. Um, the blood vial is literally a do nothing relic since we are at full health on floor 55, but I can forgive it that. Second copy of establishment seems uh, pretty unnecessary. Um, protect plus and halt plus are both actually fairly reasonable. I think I'll actually go for a protect plus here. Um, this deck is kind of gigantic, um, and protect is among the best things that the deck does. So I'll take another one. Okay. Big hearty boy. Um, right, he is vulnerable, so Ragnarok does a pretty good chunk of a damage cap here. Does 60 damage. Let's flip back to the main relic bar here. Um, I guess I would rather get a Kunai proc on turn one than do 60 damage. Getting Kunai procs is really, really important. So let's get that done. Getting Worship decost is big too. Uh, we do have to spend the Flying Slaves on turn one rather than decosting it. But no, not too bothered about that. Okay. All right, so he's hitting us for 45. We are already blocked for 18. Uh, so we're gonna need quite a bit more than that. Oh my God. Sorry, I have to restart the fight. Forgot about my artifact potion, took vulnerable. No excuse for that, sorry. <laughs> uh, give me that cut through fate. Cut through fate in the worship, like establishment two. Bite, flying sleeves, prostrate, and ancient potion. I am not taking that vulnerable, no thank you. Okay. Alright, now we only are taking 30, that's less. Less is good, less is more. Uh, still probably gonna do third eye sprawl. Yikes, get out of here. Um, Ragnarok is not very helpful. <laughs> uh, why would we save... Oh, save h for the next run. <laughs> I think he said the next turn. I was like, why would we save it for the next turn? Um, hopefully we can save the fairy for the next run. I've been... Uh, it's been a long time since I released a fairy at the top of this, this fire. Hopefully we're gearing up for that here. Uh, Simmering Fury seems aggressive, but possible. Uh, Protect is probably getting played. Um, we could play Consecrate either to try and get a Kunai proc or to just free up Hand Room. I don't hate Consecrate Miracle Empty Hind. Um, uh, actually, we are going to play Simmering Fury, because next turn we have uh, Divinity Mode. <laughs> I could release it now. <laughs> we are at the top of Aspire. I think it almost counts if you just release the Fairy now. But that feels like defeat, so... We're not going to do that. Um, this blocks for 7. This actually blocks out. Uh, but that blocks out assuming we play no more cards. I think we want to play more cards. Um, okay, I think we play... Well, wait a minute. If I want to play Simmering Fury, then I can't play Protect, right? I'd have to play, like, Simmering Fury Defend this turn. Uh, what does Simmering Fury Defend look like? So we take 4 damage, Defend blocks for net 3. We're currently blocked for 25. So we end up blocking for 28. Um, and then it hits us for 30. Take 2 damage, lose 1 plate armor. Not a huge deal. Um, and we decost the protect. We retain 3 cards. Windmill strike, worship, and protect. Draw 7. 
Uh, actually, we retain the Miracle 2. There's kind of a wild play here, which is like um, Miracle, Consecrate, Empty Mind, Worship to just go into Divinity now. Um, and then get some extra energy for playing the cards that we draw with Empty Mind. Um, it retains one less card, so Simmering Fury might draw more next turn. It's not guaranteed to play Simmering Fury. Um, I think we probably want to save Worship for Ragnar Ragnaroks and Wallops and stuff. So I think I'm just going to take the three and do the conservative line. Oh, I guess we take five because of the burn, not three. Oh, right, we way over. Uh, I forgot we were drawing with a uh, Centennial Puzzle. Oops. Uh, well, we got the wall up here, so we can worship wallop. Um, there is a limit to how much damage we can do this turn, because he took the um, bronze scales damage this turn already. So we can only do 155 more damage. That seems like a pretty uh, generous ceiling. We've got another worship coming, and we've apparently drawn past both of our um, Ragnaroks. Wait, there's only one Ragnarok here. There's no Ragnaroks in hand. There's no Ragnarok. Do we only have one copy of Ragnarok? I thought we had two. There's one. There's two. Where's the other one? Oh, they're both here. Okay. They're both in the discard. Okay. I don't know where they went, but they're not here. Um, we should lock first. Yeah, I don't. I do not care about the score at all. For the game that I'm making, um, I I don't plan on having any scoring system at all because um, there's really no point to the score system. Um, uh, you can like compare it to people's friends' scores, but um, it's just not very interesting. Um, I think what I plan to do, instead of score optimization, I want people to do difficulty optimization. So you just have like absurdly difficult settings where it's like, if you can beat that, there you go, that's your high score. Um, we could Vigilance, that's free and blocks this turn. Yeah, I like that a lot. So that blocks the beat damage, this goes into Divinity, the rest of the beat damage gets blocked by wall up. Um, okay, um, I don't want to use the Windmill Strike because we aren't getting Kunai procs with it, although it does do 42 damage. Um, I would like to play this Deceive Reality, get a safety. And then I guess this Defend is how we finish blocking. We've got two extra um, health. Might as well throw the Windmill Strike in here. It'll be easier to damage cap, though, the longer we hold it. Yeah, I'll go ahead and just throw it in there. It's, uh, it's causing a problem because we're retaining too many cards right now. So I'd rather not retain six cards, so I guess Windmill Strike's the one to go. Okay. All right. Um, is the channel trailer that tells me the stream currently isn't online supposed to be there? Uh, the stream is currently online. I don't think I can control the thing you're talking about seeing, um, but it is wrong. <laughs> Alright, so let's use third eye to block beat damage and set up some future stuff, and then probably use empty mind to draw that future stuff right now. We could play Metamorphosis this turn. Is it time? Empty mind, draw Metamorphosis, play Metamorphosis. Um, I don't know if I want five random attacks, because they're in your draw pile, so we would draw them all next turn. 
Actually, I kind of do want that. Thanks to the follow, uh, Eregan. Um, Aragon. Probably how you want that pronounced. Um, okay, so I think the play here is we get rid of everything that isn't Metamorphosis and Flying Sleeves. Or actually, we have to keep three cards. Let's see, what's the last card? Last card is Rush Down. Okay, so we, we, get, we go like this. And then when we play Empty Mind, we draw Metamorphosis, Flying Sleeves, and Rush Down. And then we play Rush Down and Metamorphosis. Um, and then the turn after that, we've got a bunch of Protects in hand. And we uh, we use those to block out while we use the Metamorphosis cards to get uh, a, a Kunai proc. Seems like a reasonable play. Got three, six, nine cards in hand, so we got one too many. Um, <laughs> I mean, I assume it's a reference to Aragorn. Aragorn? Aragorn? The, like, the king of men in the, whatchamacallit, Lord of the Rings trilogy? I'm aware of the character, but I'm not. I don't know about your, your spelling of it. It's a little different. Um, it's nice to play Protect this turn. I guess I play Eruption. The Ranger. Oh, is Eragon a, a, a separate young adult fantasy series? Okay, well, I'm, I'm mistaken then. I thought it was Lord of the Rings. I guess Lord of the Rings is... A, would you classify it as young adult fantasy? I think that's, I think that's a, a not inappropriate classification. It's definitely fantasy. I don't know why uh, people love uh, attaching... Uh, young adult to book genres seems uh, seems unnecessary to me. Seems like young adults and older adults can enjoy the same things, free of prejudice. Um, the problem with eruption is that I guess if we do eruption empty mind, we can't get stuck. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's just take the extra ten damage then. And we'll have to miracle out the, um... Wait, do we have enough energy for this? Yeah, we do. So it needs four energy, but we have four. Wait, do we have rush down? We do not have rush down. I almost drew too much. Would have been sad. Okay, uh, three, six, eight cards in hand, so we can draw three. Um... And then miracle, metamorphosis, loads up our deck with a bunch of garbage. Uh, what did we get? Two Flying Sleeves, a Follow-Up, a Sands of Time, and a Bowling Bash. Alright, fine. Um, and I'm gonna play Protect, because otherwise we're gonna have hand size problems. Um, and Rush Down. It's healing. Currently we're retaining six cards, that's a little bit too much. But honestly, we don't really want to draw all five of these anyway. So that's fine. And I would like to keep a safety, please. A lot of chat going on about young adult literature. Kids keep it down over there. Oh, crack down on chat. I have never cracked down before. All right, he's hitting for 60. Um, in order to block that, we need to play some Protects. Um, but we want to play a Protect before we take Beat Damage. Um, exactly! Where do you draw the line at Young Adult? I feel like it's a, it's a nicer way to say Teenager, right? You're not trying to... A teenager to people. Nobody wants to be called a teenager. All right, I think I'll, we'll split the protects. We'll play one protect before the attacks, and then the attacks, and then the other protect. So many flying sleeves. It's like a Matrix movie. Um, this has retained, so we'll actually keep it so that we can get Kunai procs later. We could should have kept one of the um, one of the flying sleeves too. Kind of a mistake. Yeah, you're right. We should have kept two of the two of the retained cards. Good call. 
Um, let's see. Uh, safety or protect here? I guess both, right? Because he's heading for 60. He's blocked for 30 and we need it. Okay. Cool. Okay. Vigilance, empty mine, draw some cards. Um, seems like something we need right now so that we don't take 47 and die. Um, I would love to Divinity Wallop, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Um, so we'll just have to Wallop as we are. Looks like we're skipping a Ragnarok. I guess we could Eruption Wallop. Um, doesn't seem like a tremendously good idea. Um, I think, actually, Eruption Wallop is not terrible. I think we don't die if we do that. Let's see, do we die? He starts hitting for 94. We do die. Okay. That's a terrible idea. I'm not doing that. Um, so I guess we just get the Kunai Brock. And eat some big damage. Hearts angling for a comeback. He's trying to get us. We could go into Divinity this turn, but there, we don't need. We need some cards uh, to be excited about playing. Uh, we can get a proc with Flying Sleeves, Consecrate, Sands Time, so we probably want to do that. Let's go ahead and Third Eye and set up for future turns now. Uh, windmill Strike, Follow Up Bite is a proc. These are some decent cards to proc with. I guess going into Divinity mode and then Windmill Striking is pretty good. I'll just keep this whole set. It really makes me want to, um, want to Sands of Time next turn, though. The Dome Tigers. Um, hmm. Do we just hold this whole thing? go off next turn. Seems like you want to be going off this turn, right? Because this is the turn when he's leaving you alone for a second. <laughs> adult bread. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how young adult is like a sneaky way for marketers to say teenagers, but like if you put adult in front of anything else, it's like must do sexual, right? It's the only thing that like because otherwise you wouldn't need to say adult, you would just not say anything. Um, how good is Dex? How good is getting damage this turn versus next turn? I bet next turn is a damage cap anyway. Mm. That may not be true. Alright, I'm gonna get the Dex proc this turn. Big attack first is probably what we wanted. He's probably going to take our fairy with it. Actually, no. I think we can block those pretty easily. Um. Okay. Um. Is it worth going into divinity mode? Um. Maybe we hold divinity mode for another turn. Get the proc. Play some protects. And then next turn go off, like when we find a, a Ragnarok or something. And we hold the Windmill Strike? Oh no, we can't hold the Windmill Strike, it's still gonna proc, huh? Um, hmm, maybe we just don't get a proc this turn. That seems fine, actually. All right, let's set up for next turn. Third eye. We are getting a Ragnarok, so I think holding on to worship is probably correct. Come on here. 
circle back. Um, we can bite and follow up just for damage. Yeah, exactly. Adult fantasy just sounds gross. Uh, okay, so he's hitting for 49. We're currently blocking for 11. Puts us at a deficit of 38. I almost said 58. That's wrong. Uh, 38. We can block for 38 with these. It's convenient. Thanks, math. Um, probably want to play Deceive Reality 2. So we've actually got a bit of a surplus. So I think uh, bite follow-up is probably happening, too. Uh, maybe we try to save a protect. We could just stand like this. Oops, sorry. Sort of bumping the microphone. It's probably disruptive. I need to scratch my chin. Um, what do people think about the sound quality of this microphone? It's just like a cheap rando mic. I like literally just stole this headset from my wife and my past one stopped working. It seems like it works pretty well. Um, I haven't got, really gotten any complaints about sound quality. Yeah. I subscribe to the Twitch subreddit and I've seen a lot of people being like, the most important thing as a streamer is sound quality. I'm like, is it though? <laughs> I have like a, like a $2 microphone, nobody complains. But maybe, like, lots more people would come to the stream if I had a $300 microphone. I don't know. Um. Uh, okay, so yeah, so bite follow-up is something we could do. Get 16 damage. We have to get a lot more damage, so starting is good. Um... I think we just get a proc this turn. Let's just not go too crazy. Let's just get the dex proc and block out and just be happy with it. Okay. Whoa, Sir Artemal going off. Thinking about Frodo, landless taxes. <laughs> Dude, how is it not possible to tax dodge in Narnia? It's like a world full of magic. It's just like... You can just claim you didn't get your mail because you were, like, caught in a tornado for the last three years. Um, he is hitting for 90 this turn. I would like to survive that if possible. Uh, we can hit him really hard. We can go into Divinity and hit him with Ragnarok, but that doesn't really accomplish survival, which seems important. Um, our defensive tools are Safety, Protect, and Defend. We could also get a Dex proc first. Although the Dex proc is going to cost us 6 health to get, so the 3 marginal block that it gets us is probably not worth it. Um... So we block for 18 plus 18, 36 plus 11 is 47. Um, it's not really close compared to 90. Um, we only get like 20 health out of a fairy in a bottle, so I think we're just dying here. Um, we kind of needed a wallop this turn. We needed like divinity wallop. Um, all right, well, let's go out in the bang. We got a damage cap. And then we died. Drat. Um, kunai. I just, I always, my kunai decks always scale too slowly against the heart. Um, I, I bring a kunai deck to the heart, like, literally once a day at this point. 
I've done it like twice this week where I bring a kunai deck to the heart and then it's not fast enough. Um, was the metamorphosis wrong? The metamorphosis was a little bit of a hail mary. Uh, we did get a we did get a kunai proc off of it, and that was kind of convenient. Um, yeah, flurry and weaves would have been good. We did we were offered a, a, a talk to the hand, um, and we did actually have two flurries in the deck at the end, technically generated by the metamorphosis. Or wait, was that in the Act Four Elite fight? Um. There's this temptation when you get bites that you that you think, okay, I can just solve every problem with bites, right? As long as I have like really effective scaling block, I can just outscale my opponents defensively and then bite them to death and get back to full health. And we did that like several times, right? That's how we stayed at full health, despite the coffee dripper throughout all act three. Um, and we got to full health against the awakened one. Um, but uh that, that doesn't work against the heart. You're not going to outscale the heart with your uh, with your block, unless you're playing um, Defect and you have uh, Frost Orbs. But even that, I tried to do that last uh, my last run. I tried to Defect Frost Orb the heart, and he killed me, right? Even though we, we'd gotten, like, 100 block on several turns. We got further into the fight, right? We got the heart hit us for, like, whatever, the, the like, 10 times 15 attack, or whatever the next one is. Um but uh, not quite good enough this time. Um, hmm. What, what were we supposed to pick that gave us more scaling damage here? Um, it seems like we were offered some stuff, and then we were like, no, we have Ragnarok. We'll be okay. But the Ragnarok thing didn't really pay off. Ragnarok Divinity. Um, yeah. Shuriken would have been amazing, obviously. Uh, um, hmm. Um, very interesting uh, uh, fan theory developed during this run that we were actually the like government because of the establishment. So um, we were uh, we were like a, an oppressive government official. We were, this was like policeman watcher or po police lady watcher. 